All right, all right, folks. Oh, God, it's sunny again. What's up, Garden? How's the Toes gang this week? Hello, 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 hello. How y'all doing? It is a new week. There is a new sun in my face. Although this sun is about to get eclipsed somewhere else in the world, not here. We get the regular sun today, unfortunately. How y'all doing though? Welcome to April. It's been April for a week, but I'm still gonna welcome you because we're all good people. I appreciate you, I hope you appreciate me. We can appreciate that it's April and you know, say happy April to each other. Why are you yelling at me? Good to see you well though. We are here for another week of chat and chilling and chalupin, except actually it's a short week for us. Uh, this week is Eid. And so we will be uh, taking a, um, a step a step away from the town for, for that. That is, it is a hectic time. Um, so I'll just be having today stream this week. Don't worry, we'll get a lot in. But we will be back to uh, normal next week and actually be starting at our new time. We finally figured out kind of what we want to do while we are here. Uh, and so we're going to actually start doing some st our, our streams an hour after what we are doing right now. So we will be shifting one hour forward, which is think about one hour or so behind what we do when we're in America. Um, so I'll see you there and then but until then, which is today, we're starting right now. Because, you know, as you can see, we're live. Sun, cut it out. It's very bright. Now I can't see. Hey, I can't, I, I can't see. Pedro, good to see you. Hello. Direwolf, Nitro, Shifty, Reese, Toes Gang, Vassin, Feathers. Good to see you all. Good to see you. Welcome in. Welcome in. Randy, sir. Fattius. All my bees. No hose ant. SPK. Ken Gladio, stream elements. Don't see you too often in chat. Ramoin, ID Ben. Welcome everybody, welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a good Monday. Or if you are, no, I think everybody is in Monday right now, right? Albion, hello. Anglomorph, Anglom, Anglomormoroth. See how you gave you a fish tank then ripped it away? That's how I like to start my weeks. Fury, nom, 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 welcome nom, in. Nom. Alch character. Good to see you. Randy, 07s. Stuart. You're going to see the eclipse. Very nice. Very nice. Good for y'all. I'm uh, I'm a little bit jelly. I have seen a solar eclipse, but wouldn't mind seeing another one, you know? <laughs> Donate for a curtain. I have a curtain, but I can't open the curtain if the window's open and I'm not closing that window. You could try to convince me what it won't happen. I'm not closing it. Mm -mm -mm. New hair? Yeah, it's called uh, less of it. <laughs> when you're trying to land at Everest and you're facing the sun in the verse and you can't see anything. Yeah, that's... Hello, that's me. All right, folks. Today... Today, I feel, is probably my last chance to do a real... Eh, maybe next week, end of next week. Um to do a, a good solid last preview of 323. Uh, it should be coming hmm, in the next month, I think. You it might just go to OpenPTU by then, actually. I, you know, there's a good chance that they'll do, I think they've done this with a couple of patches where they do like basically an OpenPTU and they're like, okay, it's out, the, the patch is out, play the PTU, it's good. And then they go live a couple weeks later. Um, so maybe they'll do an open PTU launch by this time next month, but I don't, I don't, I don't really see it going live uh, in April still, unless like they went to PTU today and I don't think that's happening. So while it might not be my last chance, I'm thinking I'm going to spend this week going over 323. I hope you want to hear some about what's still confer tentative, <laughs> what's still maybe coming in the patch because they actually haven't confirmed that much stuff. But a lot of it's looking pretty good. We've seen a lot of it in ISC. They've been testing a lot of it in Evocati. Uh, the stuff that we still don't know is actually getting like, there's a good chance it's going in there. We'll also go over that today. So 
mainly we're touching on features, a little bit of ship news, um, and you know we could speculate a little bit on what we think of the time it's coming, but that's as much chat's game as it is mine. So we'll see what they have to say. You gonna give me a cookie if I close the window? Ooh. Oh, the temptations. You know what? I might actually be able to fashion a little... Hold on a second. Let me see if I can... Get over here, Curtin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you. Let me... Oh, that did not do it. <laughs> that blocked everything else. I'm good over here. Perfectly fine. But or not right here where my face sits. Awesome. I'm blind again. Love the sun. I do love the sun. Thank you. Do a lot for us. All right. Think you might just see... Uh, a PTU patch, maybe wave one prior to Invictus. Wow, you don't think, you think it's, you we're gonna get one, one patch of, you? that would be two months of Evocati. That'd be quite nuts. Um, No, nah, there's no way. There's no way they don't have a live patch for Invictus. That's, that's, that's the sales. <laughs> if they didn't get another patch in for Invictus, uh, it wouldn't go well for them in May. In May's a big month. Username. Hey, my dude. Thank you for the super chat, man. Why didn't I hear that? Hit me up, alerts. Where are you? Appreciate you. ETF patch. Stay up at this point. Pretty pretty polished from what you've heard. Hey, I, I do hope it goes into the PTU. Um this week but I also kind of don't because I won't be at my computer this week <laughs> and I don't want to miss that we are actually trying to schedule out a uh, streamathon whenever that goes to PTU you'll hear more about that soon from Mrs. Tomato what's up Alex do you think 323 will have better server FPS than 322 I don't know I don't know why it would besides the Replication layer separation. I don't know if that has any effect on that, though. Don't have cargo elevators yet. Oh, really? They haven't put, uh, have they put persistent hangers? We don't have the new cargo missions. There's, there's quite a few things in Evocati that need to be tested, but I don't think it's going to push it two months. I think they're still going to try and aim for an open PTU um, fairly soon. All right, let's talk about what's coming in 323. I want to start this conversation off with what kind of expectations were set at the end of last year. Uh, many of you will remember this. This was a segment that um, Jared did kind of testing out, telling us what the next six months were going to be. So we are four months past that now. Um, and I guess we'll just start by seeing how we're doing on our progress towards this. Now, of course, Alpha 322 comes with more than just vehicles. There are structural salvage, openable cargo containers, new derelict settlements, new hairs for players, new maps for Arena Commander, and more. But since this is our last episode of the year, we have a tradition here at ISC of looking back at everything that's happened the last 12 months and reliving some of our favorite moments. And, well, look, 2023 was good. Great, even, if you gloss over that little rough patch in the middle there. But heading into the new year, little. all that I can really think about is everything that's on the horizon that's about to make 2024 the biggest and baddest year of our project yet. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to indulge myself, maybe switch out my CIG cap and put my backer hat on and tell you what has me excited about this next year for the Persistent Universe in a segment that I'm calling Disco Lando's Star Citizen 2024 cast. Can I just say everybody should have a, a well-fitted backer hat, uh, especially if you plan on going to CitizenCon. Just, you just need one. 
makes you think a little bit crazy higher copium ingest in, in gestation <laughs> uh it's good stuff it's good stuff you gotta get squeezes your head gets the brain thoughts going do you know when the new update is coming tomato i don't unfortunately i wish i did i kind of wish i didn't because if i did then i'd be even more anxious about it so <laughs> i'm fine just living in ignorance now without talking specific dates let's discuss what's being targeted and currently on track for release in just the first half of 2024 starting with master modes the new way to pilot and operate ships we've been discussing since citizen con 2952. now whether that's every ship or a staggered rollout of groups of vehicles depends on how work progresses but have they i don't remember now <laughs> i feel like i probably should have asked this on the podcast did they confirm that it was going to be every ship or is it still just staggered release because I've always thought that staggered release made more sense. And I guess I did say that in the podcast and Yogi never said no. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. But they have confirmed every ship. Every ship. Every ship. You get a master mode. You get a master mode. Master modes, mother <laughs> Man, that meme lives on, huh? Good for her. Good afternoon, not me, mister. It's definitely one of the biggest updates to hit Star Citizen, right? That why that's why it's probably taken so long. It's not actually taking super long. I, when when did it start Evocati patches? It's a couple weeks ago, right? Uh, Evocati. Most of these updates, I think, spend anywhere from like one and a half to two months in PTU, right? Maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm exaggerating that. Is it less than that? When I say PTU, I'm including Evocati. Somebody, somebody check me on that. I feel like it hasn't taken too long. But I also don't know when it actually started going to Evocati. There she goes. <laughs> March 4th, so about a month. Okay, it actually, so then that is, that is a bit longer in Evocati than normal. I thought the Evocati tests from a month ago were just the server meshing stuff. It is taking a little bit longer. You're right. You're right. I will say then, I hope that it's taking a little bit longer because they are trying to get it into a better place before leaving Evocati. But considering I don't play Evocati, I don't actually know how it's looking exactly. They've assigned each ship to an archetype with fine-tuning to come after that. Right, right, they're doing the whole rolls first. Two items committed, several dropped off, many not to be touched in EVA yet. It's not several dropped off. I think they added two things and took away two things, right? They took away the uh, account-bound items and the vehicle spawns and freight elevators, but they did the workaround for the freight elevators. They added, what, animals? Uh, Jesus, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff now. They added animals and engineering. So I think they're doing okay on, in, on that front. But I would like to see more stuff enter Evocati at least. First couple were stability patches. Jumping in for the stream while parsing XL. Yeah, I love doing XL together. There we go. Let's get back to this though. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Chat, you know how you are. So, master modes. But it's a major change to the way spaceships operate in the persistent universe, and you can be sure that we'll update on it more when the time comes. And of course, when your ships aren't in flight, they can be stored in the newly persistent hangars that are arriving with freight elevators, freight kiosks, and the new cargo transaction system that we've shared on both ISC and this year's CitizenCon. Now, all combined, they form the next major evolution of cargo careers and will also have far-reaching, broader implications for the entire Star Citizen experience. And then outside of vehicles and hangars, there's also a variety of FPS combat improvements coming to the first half of 2024. With improvements to reloading, the weapon wear and oh, misfire system. So yeah, this was all they really, this this was basically a, because they, they said next six months you could think that was the first two patches of the year, but this is really a kind of a first patch preview. 
system, scopes and dynamic crosshairs and charge and drain and even more we'll be able to show you once we return in the new year. And then outside of strictly FPS combat, there are new player character features coming like the updates to the EVA system, the visor and lens system, loot screens, default item interactions in the personal interaction system, and there's even new shopping and mission apps in development now. And while we're talking about apps, the first half of 2024 is also currently scheduled to see the arrival of our new character customizer with things like tattoos, piercings, scars, and yes, Virginia, it's true, beards. And ask beards. For how many and of what kind, only Andre knows for sure, but you can bet we're gonna ask him sometime around March. And then, of course, if you're in game, there's also a little thing called Moby Glass and an awfully big thing called Star Map. The Star Map! They're both getting their big updates in the first half of next year. Thank God. And have I mentioned those enormous distribution centers that'll be the new microcosm homes for every gameplay and mission feature that exists in Star Citizen? As well as the four, five, six, let's just say several new and updated vehicles that are making their way to the persistent universe in just the first six months of 2024? I did. Just now. I can check those off. Whew. Okay, so real talk. CIG had back on. I don't want to hear real talk. You shut your mouth. Okay, so that was that was end of last year, and most of that stuff is coming in 323, but well, at least scheduled for 323, but there are a couple things like this with your little hands, your little your little paddle hands on the on the stuff that isn't coming, and also in the personal interaction. that just kind of physical interaction stuff. But those are those are the little ones. Hey, thank you for the subs on Twitch. Solid, solid kin, solid king, <laughs> solid kin G. Uh, thank you for that tier one. And Joker Tango, thanks for gifting something out to the people, the good people. They deserve a sub every once in a while. So that's what we first heard about. 323 and while we go through we're just going to go basically down this roadmap and talk about each of these things and kind of where they are um we also have video references that we'll go over from the last iscs we've seen and the 323 kind of big dive deep dive from go. february uh it's got some they got some talks here and so you know we're going to be pretty scattered you know how we are typical tomato scatterbrain Star Citizen Hoopla, and uh, thank you for joining me, chat. Anybody who's watching this after the fact, thanks for checking it out. Maybe come join us for the stream one of these times. Feathers, you disappointed that we lost the item stuff? I am too. I mean, I don't really care too much about my account bound stuff, but I do get how important that is for, for a lot of people. And, you know, the principle of it, I think, they need to have an easier way to get that stuff back now. The routing is pretty reliable, but quantum being buggy has nothing to do with the map system. Is quantum being buggy? Until the message is fully delivered, <laughs> then you kill the messenger, murder them. This weekend as Star Citizen today or tomorrow chat? This week in Star Citizen today. Isn't that like a John Oliver thing? Am I going to make my own predictions on ships coming in 323? Oh. Am I going to throw my, my hat in the ring? Come up with some uh, possible ships coming into the batch? I I couldn't tell you. Uh, the Retaliator? You can, you can screenshot that as my... That's my input. Okay, let's let's start. Let's get started. The character customizer. Who's ready for some character customization? We're getting uh, the new version of the character customizer, and it's looking pretty good. I'm not going to lie. It's looking pretty good. Let me see. Where is it? Here we go. Yeah, I think this thing is... Oops. Okay, I'm pressing the wrong button here. I think this thing is looking pretty... The most anticipated. I wouldn't say it's the most fully featured character customizer. I think there's more work to be done on it. Um, but it's looking just so leaps and bounds better than what we have. And I think it's good at this point because whatever we have at this point is probably what we're going to have for the entirety of 4.0. You 
maybe just with a, a couple small tweaks until they get like at this point i think they would either do this right now going into 4.0 or do this at beta and if they did it at beta i don't know and I don't think that'd be a good idea. It also seems like a lot of people are starting to play Star Citizen much, much more in the sense that it's a real functioning game and it's time to just get serious about it and not do the kind of testing part of it. A lot of people who see the game don't even know it's still in alpha when they join. So getting a better, better character customizer, I think, is the good kind of polish they're looking for in 4.0 with all the squadron stuff coming in. Um, here's, a, here's a couple little previews, little looks at it. Check it out compared to your squadron and it's, it's a lot more in date i guess you could say basically trying to reduce the number of mouse clicks it takes to get what you're looking for so some of the other things that you can do in the dna section is the skin tone adjustment as well as the uh, skin material or or the skin texture itself so what you can do within this is you can actually skin tone adjust this into realistic shades of certain skin tones to better represent yourself there are freckles and we have some blemishes on there and these represent actual scans of people that we've done uh, throughout the course of the years. And we've actually scanned a whole bunch more that we will be adding to the pool as a time goes on. But we are always making that pool larger. So the faces are always going to look better and better and have more variations in them. So the next big aspect is hair. So within the hair section, there's a whole bunch of new hairstyles, which is obviously the first and most important thing. One of the interesting things, and uh, the teams I represent uh, worked really, really hard on this to have some hair simulation onto it. Um, so you can see the hair move around as you're uh, even selecting it. One thing I got to say is that throughout, throughout the development of this game, there was a decent amount of incongruity between design and in the game they've been getting a lot better at that there are still some things but like they've gotten a lot better at building archetypes of buildings and space stations and stuff they've done the same with like ships they're starting to get the branding stuff better too but now you can really start seeing it in the ui like these these all this stuff that's in the ui is pretty i i would say probably the exact same icons and stuff from the moby glass right and before it just always felt like everything, maybe maybe I'm just imagining this, but it felt like everything used different UI elements and it was just super disjointed. And I'm glad to see, you know, it might not be our favorite, but it does seem like it's headed in a more cohesive direction. What's even cooler about this now is though we had the hair selections before, you could never tint it. You could never come up with your own color set. We can go in and we can change the natural color of the hair. We can change the dye amount. But we also have the new gradient system where you can choose to have one dye color for the roots of your hair, another dye color for the tips of your hair, and then you can set where the gradient changes. Not only do we have like a blonde hair, but then we have a, a, a purple highlight that, that, that's done at the end or done at the top, and that's all player configurable. So not only do you have a whole bunch of different hairstyles to choose from, but you've got the full color gamut as well. And all of that is so, done new. Yeah, this keeps going. You got hair, you got makeup, you got all the things. It's, there's a lot to it. And you can come and watch this ISC episode. Hi, um, I'm Dave. It's pretty good. A little entertaining as they do. And overall, goes goes over a pretty good system. I think that's, you know, it's not, oh, it is committed. <laughs> okay, so this is definitely in 323. And yeah, I would have, even if it wasn't committed, I would have assumed that was definitely going to be in. But that's our first thing for today. 90% of the time you have the helmet on. Hey, man. If they designed the game for the game we were playing today, this game would f***ing suck. <laughs> they like to make everything in game blue. They do. They, they, they love blue. Look at this. Look at the screen. Look at this. It's blue. Everything is blue, huh? Even my shirt's almost blue. It's like they got a hold of me. Funny, a friend of yours was just saying yesterday how they make everything red. Ah, come on, come on. Why are they making everything red, huh? Now I'm a tomato, suddenly I'm red. I got the, the phone to Chris Roberts. It's red. Everything red, CIG. Stop it. Why not more blue? Wish you could customize the UIs and the Moby Glass color. They've talked about that a little bit. 
CR's favorite band is Eiffel 65. Is that, do they, do they sing it? Oh, is that the blue, <laughs> the blue song thing? Someone who plans on riding the train and startling people who thought they were an NPC. You're looking forward to the improved customized. Just see you standing there like an NPC on the train, completely dead still. You say something and then shut up. You wait for the player to like run around and see who that is. Say something again. They come over, they stop, they look at you. You just eyes go completely wide and freak them out. <laughs> oh God. Somebody used the sing mode. And nobody ever told me. Well, now we're going to do some distribution centers and figure out what these will do for you. Alpha 323. Organization. Check this out. It's a brand new feature coming to 323. All right, I'm done. ...owned that they distribute goods for them. This could be commodities themselves or stuff that they're making. They're very big locations on the ground. They're a hive of activity. But you can also go there and cause some chaos as well. To the player, depending on what faction it is, it's still going to be a means to way of getting different types of missions. We don't want you to go to this location and be the only person there doing a thing. In some locations, you're going to find that you're just doing a delivery mission. You're hauling some cargo out there, you're dropping it off, and you're getting your fee for doing that. But while that's happening, another player could be infiltrating it. Be uh, they could be assassinating a VIP in there. They provide a large variety of gameplay. Anything to bombing runs. First person combat. Theft, you name it. A whole quagmire of uh, different things going on at any one time. Basically a microcosm for all the FPS related gameplay uh, in the universe. What's your favorite thing about the distribution centers? They're nearly done. <laughs> okay, okay. This is gonna be a long one, but we're not gonna go through the whole thing. Sorry, I have to sing because of this thing. <laughs> so let's listen to what distribution centers are and what they do for the game. Okay. What is going on at these locations? But you want to know what's actually coming in 3.23. So let me tell you. We're going to have multiple DCs throughout the Stanton system. Each one of those is going to be owned by different brands. Some of them are going to be friendly towards you. Some of them, they're going to be hostile towards you. At each location, you're going to have access to both sides of the building, both wings. On those wings, we have two landing pads and a hangar and two cargo freight elevators. Plus, you've got the wing itself, so all the missions that you can do outside. On the inside, you'll have access to the lobby and the room's off that, so sleeping habs, a kitchenette, some VIP spaces, and some maintenance places in there as well, all with missions. Below that, you're into the main body of it, which has got the central part, which is the warehouse, which is where mainly all the goods go. Branching off of that leads into two side roads. From there, there can be a mixture of rooms. It's always a cargo shop, which is a um, part delivery space, part canteen for the staff to use for refreshment and taking a break. Okay, are you saying, sorry, you said that the um, they're only the top side portions in 323. I know these are, I actually got a video coming out about this soon. These are different from the, the, the UGFs. Are you saying this part isn't in 323 either? That would be, um, that'd be a lot. Yikesies. Why do you have to, why do you have to change to, what? Change to yo? Yo. Never really encounter chaos, so the complaints about there being chaos everywhere are weird to you. You asked to listen to CIG have said over a decade space is dangerous. Space is super safe. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Okay, yeah, this is still in 323. Deep underground. That, yeah, the UGF part of these is the part that's coming later. Okay, back to this. Um, actually, how about let's jump to here's what they're actually going to include for you. Give you a little bit more of an idea of 
what these things are actually about. For aggressive lawful players, you might get a mission where you have to go in and defend one of the distribution centers from a hostile attack by outlaw gangs. You could receive a distress call from the owner of the distribution center being informed that a gang is trying to acquire goods from a certain section of it, say, the storage room. The player will arrive. Um, they will make their way uh, to the location which is under attack. They will go in, they will see a battle underway uh, between defending forces and the attackers, and they will join sides with the defending forces to take out the attackers. Those attackers might come in waves, they might have big heavies with them, they might have bigger weaponry, um, but you will join together, possibly with friends, to take out this big assaulting force. Lawful non-aggressive players might want to do something more like delivery or hauling. It's a distribution center. Um, so you'll be able to come in, land, load your ship with all the various cargo, depending on what kind of distribution center it is, and take it where it needs to go, whether that's another distribution center or somewhere else completely different. The plan from doing an internal delivery would be using a hover trolley to distribute one cargo or multiple cargo boxes from one section in the distribution center to another. They really are big enough to do an entire mission without ever leaving. You could be doing a delivery from one room, let's say the storage room, up to the lobby. For an aggressive illegal player, you might do an all-out assault on the distribution center. You can fly in, um, the location security will kick in, so you'll be trespassing, you'll get shot at by turrets. If you manage to land, you will infiltrate the facility. All guards will be hostile to you, and you can go in, you can, uh, if it's an assassination mission, you can go in, take out a VIP. If it's a theft mission, you can run a heist, go in, rob the place, get out again. Each uh, distribution center, especially the bigger company. There's works. one part of this that I am uh, curious about. There was a segment from I believe it was the previous Citizen Con where they first introduced us to the uh, new G -G <laughs> the new UGFs. Oh, I'm way too far back. Here we go. Future Underground? Is that it? Mm -hmm. No, the new Underground. There is some nice, there is a nice little platforming bit that they were adding in here. And I do wonder if, is this it? No, 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 no. It was from the, was from this, I think. Or is this the planning one? Man, I am lost now. Underground facilities, which you saw. No. Hmm. Where was it? Where am I thinking? Because this is all art. This was Good. not... Showcase how nature slowly starts. So it must be it. in the second feature they did on this. Underground playground? On the top. No? I'm thinking, I'm, I'm looking Way for through. the, um, the little platforming puzzle that they were doing with these. Where the heck did they show those off? It was, uh, it was where you would use the tractor beams to, oh, no. That wasn't in the Squadron 42 gameplay. Pretty sure that was an underground thing. Oh, well. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome in. Good to see you all. Fresh haircut, indeed. Hoping to grab sitcom tickets. You live 40 minutes from Manchester. How quickly do they sell out? Uh, yeah, last year they didn't sell out too fast. Pretty sure you were able to still get some pretty late last year. Um, but those first waves definitely are, are, they go pretty quickly. And I remember last year, a lot of people being pretty upset when they couldn't get their tickets at first, but I'm pretty sure everyone who wanted a ticket eventually got one. It, it, we, I think last year we got ours probably within the first like three minutes that they went live. Hello, peaceful gamer. 
Can you avoid PvP in game and just enjoy PvE content? Um, no, unfortunately, there will always be PvP game content. But you can stay in safer locations. You know, you can learn the game and figure out where people who like to engage in PvP are and stay away from those places. Most people never encounter PvP if they don't want to. And as the game grows, that will become more and more true because those types of things will tend to stray more towards the more dangerous systems anyways. Yeah, you'll probably be able to get a standard ticket if you're going in day one. All right, let's see. So distribution centers, they're interesting. They're they are cool. I think it's really going to be one of those longer term things. Like this is obviously a good expansion for the game. They need new large Toast. locations for this kind of stuff, but... It's just going to be pretty small amount of missions at first. This is kind of a location. I would say if we check back on this in a year, maybe a year and a half, when they've started to get more of the procedural stuff spawning at these locations and they become parts of mission change instead of just a single mission there, they'll be more interesting. But we haven't seen everything. Maybe there will be some cool stuff in these uh, when we do finally get them. Let's see what they had to say in this which we've shown off, I think we've, we first introduced the idea of them at CitizenCon uh, two years ago. Uh, we revisited them at the CitizenCon last year. I think we did a Journey to 4.0 special somewhere in the middle. They, they blurred together people, I'm sorry. I've done a lot of these shows. Um, <laughs> distribution centers are now fully on track for, to come in Alpha uh, 323. Yep. Um, what can you tell me about what players can expect? Okay. so. Just as a bit of background, the distribution centers are these massive facilities that truly are really big, that are down on the surface of planets and, and moons and things like that. And they kind of are what they sound like, right? They're, it's a center of distribution. Like there are lots of landing pads. There should be a big, it should be a big hub of activity, basically. And there are a lot of different areas of the distribution center that are different from each other. So you've got the exterior, typically where you'll, people will be landing their ship, unloading cargo, things like that. Um, you've got the offices up top, which is generally more of a front for whatever business or corporation has ownership of this place. And then you've kind of got more of the inner workings, which are kind of where you would typically expect to see cargo being ferried. If there's machinery that are producing stuff down there, if they're making something, then that would be where that's all tucked down. So what we're trying to provide for um, 323 is some variety between the different locations so slightly different layouts between the different distribution centers so they all feel a little bit different from each other um, have different factions at each of these places as well which should give a very different feeling of what you're going to be doing there so just as an example uh, and we talked about this recently is um, you might have a law-abiding faction there and typically you would be doing what you would expect to at a law-abiding place where you would be trading talking to people things like that all above board. Uh, if you're a pirate, you can obviously come and attack and cause trouble, but you know they might have security systems mm. made to you know deal with you. You might also have a hostile faction that's take over one of these things that you know a, a corporation maybe previously had and they they came in and took over, and that would be a very combat focused area for you to go and play in. And then you might have something that's more of a mix. So you go in. The front is very professional and business like, but underneath, if you go a little bit deeper, you might find that they're up to no good. Space so, wallet. Yeah. So uh, ultimately for the content we want to provide, the, the distribution centers have a lot of possibility and there's no way that we're going to provide all the content that we want to in one drop. But we definitely want you there interacting is. there, doing cargo missions and potentially some, you know, basic like combat missions and things like that. To inter So there was a way back in the old days of Star Citizen, there was another feature that got dropped as just location. Ooh, let's see if we can just guess it. Just just pick one out um i'm thinking it's got to be around here somewhere three point three point nine no dang it i was way off where are they where are they no it's later than this here they are no where the freaking, where the heck are the cargo decks? Come on, one of the best additions to Star Citizen we ever seen. Did they just remove them? <laughs> Were they like, we don't, we don't talk about that anymore. 
When did cargo decks come into the game? Because I'm only seeing refinery decks on here now. Are they... Did they get taken off of this? Am I insane? Am I imagining cargo decks? Do they not actually exist? Somebody blink three times if I'm imagining this. I'm so... <laughs> I'm so confused. How does this happen? Refinery decks are right here. You know what? Whoops. Oh my god. Come on. Alright. When did these come in? 3.14. Toe. On Google it says 3.11. Now y'all are confusing me even more. The, the mystery of cargo decks. Hey, Zero, thank you for the sub. Much love to you one month. Tier one. Bunch of ones for the good times. I appreciate you. Mm. There's no cargo decks in <laughs> bossing sake. <laughs> uh, I don't see anything on 314. Um, ah! Yes, 311. How did I miss that so much? Okay, so I was two updates off. That's not too bad. Cargo decks. Holy crap. Can't believe I... <laughs> that was terrible. So, cargo decks were an addition that came to this game and did literally nothing for us. <laughs> they, uh... The only thing that happened with cargo decks that makes them usable is a store was added there. And this is a store that... You know, probably would have been down in the gallery anyways. So this is a complete waste. Distribution centers are nowhere near cargo decks. But they also aren't necessarily fully featured when they're getting in now. So don't expect them to have a ton of content. Don't expect to be spending all your time there. But it's definitely a new location. And going to be something that's fun to experiment with at least. Alright. So the... Um, Uh, the, let's see, we have some AI additions. When's the last time there was like an AI addition? I, I don't think they always called them. I think they just called them character. Locations, locations, locations. Here we go. Characters. That's just uh, character customizer stuff. This is locations, 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 character, player hair update. There really hasn't been any... Except for, I want to say the, no, um, it would have been the planetary navigation tech, I think would have been the last major thing. Here we go. AI, flight combat AI stuff. This is 2020. 317 AI. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, there's the planetary navigation. So the last major thing AI related was just planetary navigation. Um, and then obviously we had new factions, but that's not AI necessarily. There's been almost nothing going on AI related for a long time. And creatures aren't a big thing. But at least, you know, they are, um, 315. <laughs> Doctor and nurse behaviors. I'm just missing everything today on this thing. Oh my god! Ow! Somebody asked you to shoot me? Oh. Thank you, T-Love. Appreciate you. Thank you for shooting me. Um, the it's random gun sticking out of the side of the screen. The AI that we're seeing now is going to be Fauna, actually. And we do have a, a very brief video of it. I think it wasn't, I don't think it was on YouTube. Pretty sure it was just on the, the tweetsers. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Hey, can you, can y'all, can y'all let the, the server meshing argument go? <laughs> It's, it's gone on long enough. Um, let's see, where is this? Here we go. This is really all we've seen so far. It's just... This. That's it. Um, everybody has their opinions on 
how good or bad these animals look, whether they're... Gosh, what the hell? I think I got bit. Whether they are worth the time they've taken, um, all that kind of stuff. But this was like, I guess, one of the first official sort of reveals that uh, we'd be seeing creatures in 323. And they literally are saying, watch your back at 323. Then they added it to the roadmap. So we don't know too much about what this is going to be. Um, besides the fact that these are animals that you can hunt, they will have missions associated with them. So there are actual, they will just tell you where these are and you can go find them. Apparently they are also just kind of prowling around Microtech. Um, and in the background, they have collectibles. You can kill them, harvest something, and it might be used for crafting later, it seems. There's also a bird. We don't know as much about this, but we did know a bird was coming at some point due to the monthly reports. And... That one also has something in it that sounds like it could be used for crafting stuff. So, we'll see what these are. There's not really much to say about these. Just fauna. Yay! Finally. You've heard the Copion what has a uh, pretty cool pack AI and will run away and find more to fight you. Oh, that's interesting. That'd be very cool. Don't forget the space cows in the engine demo. <laughs> Don't y'all love... Internet, internet, man. Both the best and worst thing to ever happen to us. Unfortunately, when we make great things, we make them poorly. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who did stick around. Much love to you. I know you're here for the good stuff. And you knew we weren't going to give up on you. Thank you for still being here. We are going to get back on track now. After this computer stopped bugging me about losing internet. I can't tell you what just happened there. I was having router problems before the we went live and... Um, that's actually why it was, we were, it was a little weird to start up. Um, unfortunately this stream will be split up into two on YouTube. Hopefully people catch that, but this will still be uploaded as one video on the other channel. Now, if I wasn't mistaken, we were getting into some UI stuff. The gameplay section for 323 has a freaking whopping 18 different things to expect coming in. So there's a lot to go through. Um, Let's start with the UI stuff, and I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to, you know, you know that? jump around. I'm just going to literally start with the, uh, I'm going to hit all the UI right away. Hey, Wobbly Bear, thank you for the toes. The super chat, appreciate you. Was he talking that whole time the stream was gone? I was not. Make great things, but on a deadline, so never perfect. Well, internet's been around for a while, man. <laughs> okay, so our first little UI update coming in. Whoa, why is my camera so close to me? Back it up a little bit. There you go. <laughs> Look at my freaking almost bald head. UI has taken a huge step up in Star Citizen. A big freaking step up. Thank God. Let's talk a little bit about what it's looking like. Here's the first one. It's the new looting screen. Oh. Now I think this one is interesting because it is taking off, taking a lot of reason away from players having to use their inventory. There's a couple of things that are doing that. First is this looting screen, obviously, and you'll see why in a second. Second is the freight elevators um, and item banks in the city that are taking away basically your need to use um, an overarching inventory for the cities and stuff. Now, you, it still sounds like you'll be using your inventory, as they say here, to manage your backpack and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of that quick in and out looting that you normally would be doing is just gonna be in this UI. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens to the inventory going forward and how they still include a sort of a third person view. We see a lot where we can customize our character. So here is what they've shown so far. The loot screen builds on a lot of work that we've done in the personal inventory over the past few years. It's a new UI giving the player the possibility to just pick up stuff on the go. The existing personal inventory can be a bit cumbersome when trying to pick up ammo in a firefighter and things like that. So the new loot screen aims to address those issues. Now when the player goes over to a body or a box, it can quickly press F and this will bring up 
the new load screen. This menu is a simplified version of the player's loadout and the entity they are looting. You'll see the looted entity items on the top and the players on the bottom. You can easily swap between both. I think the thing I... Nah, never mind. ...and equip things from what you're looting by just clicking or clicking and dragging. Yeah, I gotta say, I think, I think the thing that I don't really enjoy about this is I was always under the impression that they physicalized everything on the body so we could grab it. Now, they could still have the physical interactions planned for this because they do have them planned for other things and they haven't put them in the game yet. But I, I'm hoping that this doesn't mean that they're just going to replace everything with a, a canned animation kind of thing. The new load screen. This menu is a simplified version of the player's loadout and the entity they are looting. You'll see the looted entity items on the top and the players on the bottom. You can easily swap between both and equip things from what you're looting by just clicking or clicking and dragging. This screen is a more simplified version of the inventory, is to make the experience for the player to be quicker. We also now said the new inter interaction system is going to let you do it still the old way. You'll just click a button and it'll take you to a new page and you can swap your armor with who you're looting and see everything that they had equipped. Hopefully it's we still physical then. I really like the idea that you're actually grabbing stuff off the body and they've gone through so much work to put this stuff actually on the body, you know? Um, yeah, the fauna is... Uh, on Microtech, they introduced fauna to the planet. Oh, let's see. They introduced one type of fauna to the planet. I don't remember what their idea about it was. I don't know what the lore is exactly for the Copion, but I'm guessing they're going to talk about that. But yeah, everything that's there would have been human introduced so like the cows and the birds and stuff the birds and the bees and the cows and tiny window for boxes is rough but you're sure that's a work in progress tiny window for boxes up here i don't know it i don't think it's as tiny as it looks i mean these are all pretty big touch targets just looking at my mouse and how it how it fits on here i don't think i'd have too much trouble this one maybe yeah this is a pretty small one version of the inventory is to make the experience for the player to be quicker. We also now have a separate section for armor, which wasn't a consideration for Squadron 42. You'll just click a button and it'll take you to a new page and you can swap your armor with who you're looting and see everything that they had equipped. We also have some contextual actions in the loot screen. If you are looking for ammo for a specific weapon, you can hover over that weapon and it will show you any magazines or attachments that will fit that weapon. Yeah, smaller boxes you know, might be good. Loot those or so you can see more. Weapon attachments using that menu. So when the player hovers a specific item, this will appear a tooltip that will tell you the available actions. And that will include, for example, a single click to equip, a ship left, left click to store it. We've also added a button to the loot screen to swap between that and the existing personal inventory view. The inventory will stay, it's not going anywhere, uh, and is more for your management. So what you're seeing here is still, uh, the visuals are still for Squadron. We are planning to do a PU version and that will come for this release. And our team's last big addition to 323 is an updated shopping experience. Hold on, hold your horses, hold your horses. So that's the that's the looting screen. Pretty solid addition. I think it's going to help out a lot of people. And I'm certainly looking forward to it. Uh, after that, we do... Oh, I said I was going to stick to UI. <laughs> but we can get through this pretty quickly. This is just missions to hunt creatures. Uh, seems like this is a, a fairly alpha implementation, the way that they're doing it, actually, instead of doing the creatures that they had already planned on. Um which is the Boreal Stalker, Pyro Crab, and the Stormwall. Um, it seems like they're throwing these in as more tests than anything, but the missions, I'm glad they're throwing them in with missions for sure. And I can't wait to see kind of how that, how that advances. I hope we see more of that over the next couple of patches and they don't drop it in and then leave it, leave it alone forever. Um, but back to UI stuff. We've got the Moby Glass rework. Oh my God, yes. Folks, let's do a little dive back into history because this is always hilarious to me. The, the Moby Glass was... 
Ooh, that's loud. No, this is not the one we want. This is a concept. I'm going to find you guys the Moby Glass from before when they were developing it. More intuitive. Players should be able to quickly see where things are, what they can fit on things, and be able to read the text. The player... It's full screen now. So this is when they were introducing to us the what is now the current Moby Glass, but at the time was the future Moby Glass. No, they're just different skins, but under underneath it all, it's all the same. In the short term, we're going to be hopefully seeing a lot more usable um, Moby Glass. It's full screen now. There's a lot. All the icons have been brought down to the bottom, so it should be a lot more readable, um, a lot more intuitive. Players should be able to quickly see where things are, what they can fit on things, and be able to read the text a lot clearer. So for 3.1, we wanted to make sure that it was better under the hood, but also a lot more convenient to use. So yeah, it was, it was largely dealing with all the problems we either didn't get fixed for 3.0, or all the feedback that we could, got to address and say, like, let's make sure that this is great moving forward, because there's a lot of other apps, the map and mission manager and things like that, that we want to tackle that, that need bringing up to a, a better level. So this was kind of the first step at, at an iteration. All right. So there was that. And maybe we can find the one that was actually before that. Back in the day. Would it be on this? Jesus. That is loud. Like how the YouTube just suggests you random stuff when you type in something search. I don't think I'm going to be able to find it pretty very easily. But the Moby Glass has come a, a long way, a long way. And it's really not been great up until now. I am incredibly happy to see that um, not only is it looking better and more usable and readable, it's always it's also looking pretty full featured. Not sure how I feel about the the spacing of it yet. You can tell that they definitely wanted to make sure that it fit the whole screen. Like they've been moving. It used to be that it fit just just like the 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 inner thirty percent of your screen, inner fifty percent of your screen, and then it was like most of your screen, which we have now. Now it feels like they're really trying to maximize the space, and they've slowly moved from the idea that it's just something on your wrist to a menu that you're using and your arm is just there to kind of show where it's coming from. Some people like it, some people don't. I think it's a solid compromise. Gives us a good usable menu and also makes it look kind of cool to use. So here it is. So in 3.23, we've got a really big improvement to the user experience. So everything's designed to look nicer and feel nicer. Ready to upgrade. And sadly, we haven't really had all the time we needed. Okay, but like, look nicer. at... Ready to upgrade. And sadly, like, look at on the outside over here how much of like a double vision there is. I don't think in the middle it's very bad at all. And for a lot of different things, it's not so bad. But in the outside, the distance between the shadow and the actual icon is so much. I love this layout though. Not only do I love this layout, I like that every section on the home screen has a little quick tab that sends you to that part of the, the menu. It makes so much more sense. It's like it's actually designed for use rather than just as like a something to, to look at. We, we haven't really had all the time we needed to get all the apps there. So you are going to recognize the VMA and the comms app just as they have always been. But with that package, you're getting all the other apps with a visual update and also functionality updates for some of them. You've got a completely updated home screen, so you can do things like view your ship, you can see your health, uh, notifications, it's kind of the information you really need to so see. So the reason the reason that they do um, they do this double vision stuff is because it's supposed to it it's the same reason they try to do a lot of different things. Really, they're trying to show that it's an actual display and it's not like the reason. This does this and your HUD, I don't think your HUD does the double vision, but maybe it does. It's supposed to be, oh, this is a physical display in the game and it's having the lighting apparition effects because of the way that you're viewing it at an angle. 
obviously though people hate it <laughs> so i don't think i don't know if they're going to stick to it but that's all part of the star citizen flair they chris roberts really wants to have the things he wants in the game i think a vast majority of the time that's how it goes um and i'm i'm, I'm thinking this might be one of those things you can see your health uh, notifications it's kind of the information you really need to see now so we're also getting a fully new health app where you can see all the things that's currently affecting your health and all the stats that you would normally see on your HUD. I like this a lot. Over time, we've added all these cool new things that can affect the player. So we're going to have things like radiation. We've got existing stuff like you can break bones. If you heal yourself, you can potentially overdose. Yeah, this is there's I'm thinking there's a lot more that's going to go into medical gameplay if they're dedicating this much obviously this is important for people to know what's going on with them but medical gameplays this kind of thing reeks of like debuffs and stuff like that the way they're talking about oh yeah you might know what happened but you need to know how it happened and what it what caused it um i feel like that could have just been on the widget for for health stuff but to make a whole screen about this that kind of excites me for more exploration based stuff you can have drug effects all this cool stuff is happening, but it wasn't obvious to the player just walking around what was going on under the hood. So we added this new app where you can track all that stuff. So the health app is gonna be the place to go when for some reason you're feeling ill and you just need that extra little bit of information of what do I need to do to take care of myself to get out of this situation. So the contract manager has been Love in the game for a long time. Love this. And it's just grown kind of obvious that it's not doing all the things you need it to. All the functionality. The fact, like, this, the most basic things get me excited in this game now because of how long we've sat on these alpha implementations. Obvious that it's not doing all the things you need it to. Like, a literally all just a drop-down menu for these missions already makes it so much better. And the uh, the flip over for illegal and illegal missions is like, hey, y'all been playing. All the functionality is essentially the same internally, but it needed a visual polish and also the user experience needed bringing up to date. So there's some new features like you can toggle between illegal missions, you can see what the rewards are going to be ahead of time. So no more randomly getting attacked by the police, <laughs> hopefully. It's probably your fault anyway. So they, they recognize those little statements show how much feedback they probably get on things like that how and i'm wondering where they get that feedback from if it's just spectrum complaints if this is uh i see issues people put in thinking it's a bug when it's really just you know you don't know where your your uh your crime stat is coming from but clearly a lot of people have been accidentally getting crime stats because they go into that personal tab it doesn't tell you something's in, in illegal and then you stumble into that i do think that there should be some you you have to pay a little bit of attention to figure out if you're doing something legal or illegal like it's nice that there is an unverified mission switch, but also you should be kind of required to listen to what people are saying to you, you know? If you go see a mission giver, they shouldn't sit you down and be like, I'm going to give you something illegal to do. <laughs> like, you should have to listen, figure out what they're saying, and then think about the, the factions you're dealing with. Otherwise, it's kind of starting to hand feed it quite a bit. Again, it's nice that we've got the menu. To some extent, that's probably necessary, but I do hope that they still... Give it some explore, explorability. Ahead of time. So no more randomly getting attacked by the police, <laughs> hopefully. It's probably your fault anyway. Some big improvements coming to the Moby Glass. That's coming in 3.23, uh, but one thing we didn't talk about yet was the star map. We've had the, the original star map in Star Citizen for a long time, so it was overdue for another. All right. There's also uh, Kimichi Kimchi also said something solid. The idea of illegal missions going to your Moby Glass. I think maybe there could be an, an in-game and a lore kind of reason for that. I do understand them wanting that to be an option. Requiring people to go to a place to get criminal missions is a bit much. Um, yeah, I don't know. Moby Glass spelled with one S. I did. Super exciting. What's next? 
what are we talking about after this? Moby Glass Rework FPS Map System. So that's gonna be kind of included with the star map. So we'll just cover those both at the same time. This is phenomenal. And I do like to go back and highlight what they showed as their different goals for this over time. So first we go to ATV maps. Grab this. And then we go to partnered development, grab this, and here. But we wanted to expand on that. So, okay. Thousand kilometers on the right hand side. First, this is all right, and information from the level. Here is Simon Bursley with more, and that. And you know what? For extra, let's make it. Let's do one better, and go back to Citizen Con of this. Nah, we don't need to do that. Okay, so check this out. This is our first time ever talking about what maps in this game might look like uh, besides the star map. Check this out. So the area we're working on right now is called uh, the, the local area map. So we have the star map in the game, so this is the equivalent of when you're walking around on foot. At the moment we're at the end of the pre-visualization phase. The, the first thing was, is it going to be 2D or 3D? Everybody wanted to do 3D. So we did a test out and it, it looked, looked pretty good. There's also things like, do we want to be able to see the enemy characters on there? So we did a little test for that. Um, also it was interesting how we work out how the player moves between floors looking at the map so how they look i'll at the say this at this point when i saw this map i was like maybe don't go with 3d <laughs> i did not think this looked very good Down but kind of I, I guess at the stage of development it was at the concept and the idea that's why i'm not a ui person the, the people who saw it they knew what to look for it's a case of uh, working out how to make that in the game in a functional way so ui team itself is is fairly small and there's all these big systems in the game that this links in with so um, we have to deal with the other teams, for example, that we have to work out how we get that, the map information from the level, where do we store the locations of all the items, all that kind of thing. So there's, there's lots of things to talk about with the rest of the studio to get this done. And also, it's, uh, it also needs a certain level of cool, so you know, what about it looks good and makes it a bit different to, to other games. At the moment it doesn't have that, quite that level of visual polish that we want, so we want it to look Want it to be as good as what you'd see in a sci-fi movie, for example. So just now it's it's functional and it's fine, uh, but we don't want fine. We want it to look really good. As the game's got bigger, obviously there's more places to get lost now, so that having a map is, has become more important. With a feature like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, this is the old old version of ISC. They used to do it more kind of this style. From here, this is this is the next iteration. This is uh how long in between was this? That was 2019. This is 2022, so three years difference. Uh, this is where they got to. Which is showing how the visuals, the mini map, in terms of sort of an isometric render map, but you'll have a, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see kind of what the, the tech is. So first, this is in the editor, um, uh, but it's essentially what it does is it's taking our existing um, layouts, levels, ships, so we don't have to build this custom, but it's a way of applying certain shaders and marking up certain objects to be displayed, like the floor gets displayed, but the walls don't. Uh, so we can just take the existing geometry you already have streamed in that you're walking around already, uh, and then use it to be rendered for our minimap. So this is, this is essentially in the engine using the Idris uh, ship itself and the various parts of, it, of its interior to create the minimap without any special this you know this doesn't have any specific custom like ui art for it other than some of the like level things that say you know uh you know ground level or whatever it's it's one of the advantages of having high detailed yeah. ships yeah because yeah. the environment's already you know already in a good state to show straight out of the gate so yeah the coolest thing of this and i guess what he's describing basically is that they're able to take what's already in the game because they made it with their own engine everything is marked up the exact way they need it to be uh for the game specifically and it allows them to just render each of those things as a map like this it kind of makes it wireframe 
and takes out a lot of the work of having to mark up each location in the game into a map like you might have to do if you were building it, I guess, in um, somebody else's game engine. So from there, this is what we actually got in the game. One just showed both the stars and planets and so on, but we wanted to expand on that. So opening up the star map for the first time in 323, you're going to realize that the star map is not just the star map anymore. It's the everything map. It's now called Maps app rather than Star Map. And why did we change it? Uh, because we now have the interior map, so this shows like your local area, as well as sort of zooming out and showing the uh, Star Map. So what is the interior map? It's a bird's eye view of the current environment. It's a really cool 3D map, so Instead of just having a top-down view, this is showing you the actual level. And it's presented as a fully schematic 3D view in which you can find every relevant point of interest, such as a shop, transit station, hospital, and the like. You can get them for ships, for landing zones in 323. In future, we'll expand on that and add it to more areas. And if you're not familiar with the location you just arrived to, or you're a new player and you're not familiar with any of them, actually having the spatial awareness of where the things that are relevant to you are is going to provide a giant step up in terms of the experience of the game in general. As it's fully 3D, you can move around, navigate between floors, zoom in and out, and so on, as you'd expect. You will see the local area where you're walking around, something you've never been able to do before. Essentially, you'll be able to navigate between all the different rooms and, and different important areas of the game. It also offers a way to overlay your own data onto it that is specific to you. So, for example, the location of your mission objective. Ooh, I'd love to hear that. Custom markers. So this is, I think this is the this would have been the biggest part of the entire update for me if it was coming in 323. The, the, the idea that you can put down custom markers is coming, but being able to share them, persist them, uh, that's not a thing yet. And that was, I was, I, I, before this episode, I was already writing a video about it. And I was so freaking excited. So it's not a thing. I think I'm still going to put that in my video and just talk about how it's not coming yet. But custom markers, we're, we're getting there. We're very close. We're very freaking close. At this point, we can actually see that it's a thing. It's happening. And um, for people who are interested in stuff like exploration, this is a really big deal. Data running, big deal. Just treating data as, an, as a commodity is a big part of why some people join this game, myself included. Huge part. You can also use it to plot a route to another location on the map. Drop a marker and navigate to it, so we'll see a line on the map that shows you where, where you can actually go and where the easiest way to get there. So on that map, you will be able to just click any room you want to go to. You can go between the different zones of the area and you can place a little marker and route all the way there. So navigating is one of the primary use cases we want to make as robust as we can for 323. And so part of that involves providing a, a variety of fallback cases in order to help you best understand how to get somewhere. So for instance, if we ask the AI system and it can't return you a path via its nav links and nav meshes, uh, we can ask the transit system. Uh, and if the transit system says there's a connection between the two zones, uh, then that would help you route. So at the time of recording, we're having issues loading all the different OCs that's in a big landing zone, for example. So we're looking into these solutions to make sure that you can track from one part to a fully different part of the area. Okay, um, I don't know. You guys are mentioning if this line was physicalized in the world. I feel like that's, that's just getting to, like, there's a lot, there's a lot to get from this game having signs, the real world signs that kind of tell you where stuff is. And this does take away from that a bit. Not so much that I think they shouldn't have interior maps, but making it to, I guess it would be better than looking at a mini map to look at the, the world around you as you're walking through. It wouldn't get you staring at the mini map, but it also gets really, really handholdy, which might not be a bad thing. It's not inherently a bad thing to hold people's hands. You can turn it off, so it is a choice. Um, yeah. 
Everyone just looks at the pathway or they look at their minimap, right? Maybe it would work out. Surprised they didn't go that route. I wouldn't mind seeing how it goes. I wouldn't say I'm completely convinced on it. But yeah, the ability to switch something like that on and off, maybe they'll treat it kind of like the um, <laughs> the dynamic crosshair where it's something with certain helmets. Who knows? But that is the interior map, and it's looking pretty good. It's not going to work for every location in the game right now. The map specifically is still being marked up for a lot of stuff. But it does look like space stations and landing zones and um, some ships at least are working. So I imagine this will get better again along with a lot of these other things over time. These are replacing a lot of the systems we've had for seven years now. But they're not coming in fully complete still. They are going to be worked on as they go. We are still at the alpha phase. Um, Star Citizen 1.0 is nowhere near close to being complete. So these things are going to see some work as we go. Let's take a look at what's next. The star map, the freaking best part of this whole edition. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Let's get into it. And you will see the universe open up in front of you as you zoom out. From here, we can see the entire verse. We can see all the planets. Space stations, Lagrange points, all of that good stuff. You can then click on any of those markers and you will be automatically panned and zoomed into them so you can see a little bit more detail about them. If you've zoomed in on a planet, for example, you can zoom in a little bit more and you can start to see the surface locations. So you can see towns, outposts. You get all the information you need about them. We're adding this new system where you can see all the amenities that are available at that location. That's amazing. Like so all of this stuff that I see about this map, Outside of the consistent use of blue at all times, there are little bits of green here. I hope they do start to use more orange, but everything I see about this map, I love. The information it shows us, how much it shows us, the routing it can do. I do hope we can add more waypoints in our path here um, while we're in transit, but especially the, the movements and animations. Hi. You got all the information. I love this, that you can now see what's actually at a... Uh, a a space station. I am hoping that this is information you have to acquire manually in places that aren't as civilized. Um, literally something as simple as like in Mass Effect when you would buy the data for a, for a system before going there. If you just had to get the system data at a store before you go into the, to the system or you had to buy it from a data runner or something, I think that'd be great. It would add some exploration benefit into the game and it would still allow people to use this when they do reach a new system. This is sick. This has pissed me off a lot. You don't know if a place has a weapon shop or not, and that's, oh God, that's nice. Thanks for, the, uh, thanks for all the haircut <laughs> compliments, guys. Feels good. My hair's breathing again. And, and just like every time we do this, me and Mrs. Tomato realize, we like me more with short hair. We'll keep it like this for a while. We're adding this new system where you can see all the amenities that are available at that location. So for uh, outposts, landing zones, and stations, there will be a section here for amenities. It even shows, which... like, this really shows how different space stations are going to be, that they're showing this one has docking. Some of them won't. Food courts, clothing, loading dock, freight elevators. Like, these are all, I, I think it's safe to assume these are all things that will or will not be included at a space station. Maybe you won't have large hangars. Maybe you can't land there. Maybe there are 15 um, space stations in Pyro, but only four of them can take something bigger than a constellation or something, right? Like, there are a lot of little hints here how they're going to start to differentiate, especially our location games. Games? games? And stations. Game. There will be a section here for amenities, which will show you things like whether you can buy weapons here, whether you can buy ships here, whether there's a food court, whether there's a hospital or a clinic all of these sorts of things you'll be able to see on those box outs so you'll know which is the most appropriate location to go to. 
We've shown Tess and Khan, obviously, that these display much better now, so you'll see them uh, rotate with the map, and if they've gone behind the planet, they fade out, and if they're in front of your view, they're brighter, so you can see them more easily. So at the moment, if you zoom in, it will eventually get too big and you'll go through, but yeah, I'm that's... currently working on it so that it will zoom in to the surface. And that's really good. Sort of clips. I'm, I'm really good that she specifies that there because it it's not a good looking, <laughs> it doesn't look good when it zooms in like that. And they talked a little bit about this before during Citizen Con too. And I've got a little bit to say about the the, the, what we what we're seeing from the rendering of planets, but we'll get to that. Where is? Here we go. Sleek new design. We're improving all the existing apps, and we're going to develop some new ones too along the way. So we've got a video now. And then there's our interior map technology, which will truly help you understand your surroundings. Better awareness of your surroundings and threats. Exploring new map and mapping new areas. Any locations for later and sharing these with your friends. So they don't, he doesn't really say that that's coming anytime soon, but she did confirm she's working on it. So again, just like some of these other features, one of those things that's going to slowly trickle into this app over time. Um, but also the ability the map and for this thing to differentiate between text and background based on the lights and, and the contrast, they just got to get better with these. Outline it in black or something, like give it a little bit more of a something that that makes it pop better compared to the planet because it also makes the planets look kind of dull the way that they're rendered I, I feel like there needs to be just more color and stuff i don't know we're maybe we're looking at only white boring what am i looking at here this isn't hurston is it this isn't the way they would render hurston right is it it is see that's that's what makes sense Add the color in. What do you guys do? Why does Hurston look white? <laughs> yeah, we need some help there. UI. If you zoom in, it will eventually get too big and you'll go through. But I am currently working on it so that it will zoom in to the surface and you'll never actually sort of clip through the planet. And generally, we've tried to make it feel like a much more pleasant user experience. So there's things like items don't disappear off the back of the map anymore. Everything's easy to read. So as always, the star map is what you're going to want to use to route your way through the verse. You can still set routes as you could in the previous version, but there is a little bit more feedback if there is a problem and you can't set a route, whether you don't have enough fuel or whether it's obstructed. It's going to be so easy. It's going to be so intuitive for you to you click the thing and there you get the button to say set route. It doesn't always just have the ability to set a route because you can't always set a route. We will let you know when you can set a route. Oh, I love this. There are a few things that- are I'm a huge fan of the way that it slowly, like it, it tracks the path that you're routing as it zooms the map. It all looks so good. This whole segment this here. New star map that have not been seen in the old star map. I love that. The primary one there would be search. So we now have a list of all locations. So there'll be a little drop down in your top left corner. If you open that up, you can see the full list of locations ordered by what is closest to you. And then you can also type any location and it will appear. So you could type, uh, for example, L1 and all of the Lagrange point ones would uh, appear. So this allows you to a lot more flexibility to finding what you're looking for when it's not as sort of, you know, immediately right there when you're at the current view. So you can go all the way across the solar system to look at something completely different. Man, I freaking love search. Star Citizen is a massive systemic game. We've got all this cool stuff going on. We've got multiple players doing things at different times. So we wanted to improve the overall interface from the player to that game world. I so wonder if there's anything big... there on this map. I don't really feel like matching up all these points. As look, they probably make sense as Lagrange points given the, the system. To improve the overall 
interface from the player to that game world. So a big part of that is the new Moby Glass. Finally, we've gone to this effort uh, to refactor and do the whole Moby Glass hub from scratch. New maps, new applications, everything is using new tech, and we have a much more flexible and robust system for the Moby Glass under the hood. When you're playing Star Citizen, it should be a smooth experience. You shouldn't be stuck trying to find whatever it is you need to find at the moment. We're helping you do that with the new apps, making it easier for you to find your missions or to even just find a place in the verse. Now that we have that framework in place, um, then you know it's kind of the sky's the limit in terms of what we can do with it and how many apps we can develop for it. Man, just and let me all... share my, my custom map points and I'm good. I don't need no sky. Okay. Was that all of our UI to talk about? I think there's some, uh, where's the visor and lens update? They didn't take that off here, did they? Nope, there it is, okay. Let's talk about visor and lens. That is basically how you see the whole game. It's your HUD, essentially. Visor when you have a helmet on, lens when you don't. And there's a lot actually coming to this too. Most of it is around combat right now, but it does show some good good signs of the future and how they're going to develop this stuff and make it a little more customizable and definitely way more user friendly now check it out lens and the visor it's down to whether you're wearing the helmets or not the visor is essentially your hood projected onto the helmet so it's shown on the visor in front of your face when you take the helmet off you're wearing a contact lens in lore and that shows your hood as well of course, in a video game, you're going to need all that HUD information. You get information about your active status, your weapons, what you're holding, notifications. Oh, man. Your mission. Thank God they have a system where they can control notifications better now. I'm also really enjoying the uh, mission objectives, too. Your comms, your chatting, everything like that is part of the visor and lens. But we don't want to do it and just, it's magically there, right? You get the lens, it's right there. You have all the information projected on your eye immediately. And the second you put a helmet on, you will get the visor experience. It's making the UI diegetic. The big upgrade in 323 isn't so much new information, but it's a new dynamic system for showing and hiding widgets based on your current situation. So that kind of, that was a switch there between not wearing a helmet and wearing a helmet to give you a sense of how the HUD will change. Play it in slow motion here. Because you will see, you will see different stuff start to pop up on your screen um, as it switches over. So. You can see there's nothing up here, no compass, no altimeter, no combat stack, and then boom, you get all that information, you get your uh, your pitch meter, your compass, radar is available. And I think that's kind of just emphasizing how stuff is gonna change based on what you're wearing. And you won't necessarily have all the systems you need at all times. So all the basic information that you would see, like you need to know your health status. So you have all of these widgets telling you, okay, you're dying from this thing, You're you have no oxygen. It's warning you of all the different hazards that you can meet out there. We've got regions all over the lens and we can specify which widgets we show on them. For example, down the bottom right, we've got the weapons. We've got the control hints. And we've got low priority notifications, which can take up a lot of real estate. If something else shows on screen that would overlap one of those, it, one of the lowest priority ones will dynamically turn off and it'll all fit nicely onto screen again. Previously, all notifications were shown in the center of the screen, which could get a bit busy. We've now introduced the concept of low priority notifications, which anything Most that's of not them. super important to you will show in a box down in the bottom right of the screen instead of being loud and in your face. I wonder why not at the very bottom of the screen. Is there crucial info that would pop up down there? Down here? I wonder why over here? Go on a box down in the bottom right of the screen instead of being loud and in your face. I guess it's a little easier to see you like that. You are for the missions and objectives 
Again, that's all been updated. The notification should animate over to the right-hand side of the screen where we've got our new objective UI. This presents essentially all the same information as the old objective UI, but in a much nicer package. We've also reworked the weapon UI, so you see a more detailed description of the weapon that you have. And this new visor and lens has been adapted to incorporate the new minimap. Another aspect of our dynamic widget system is that we can turn off specific widgets when, depending on what you're looking at. So if you've got your Moby Glass open, it can hide a lot of the widgets, maybe except for the notifications. If you're looking at a kiosk, maybe we just want to show the control hints on the right-hand side and everything else can be easily hidden. So with the visor, we can now customize the content that you see, depending on the helmets you're wearing. And what this new dynamic region gives us beyond 323 will be allowing artists to style things based on different visors and different missions and different purposes. The code for the different styles of manufacturers, etc., is in now. You can see the potential of having different visors for different helmets for these different roles. The next thing is to get the artist onto the job, really. In 323, the only specialized visor is going to be the combat visor. There's a... Hold on a second, guys. Artists ...to style things based on different visors and different missions and different purposes. The code for the different styles of manufacturers, etc., is in now. You can see the potential of having different visors for different helmets for these different roles. The next thing is to get the artist onto the job, really. In 323, the only specialized visor is going to be the combat visor that comes with the dynamic crosshair. But you can expect us to continue iterating on these visors in future patches. So the loot screen builds on a lot of work that we've done in the personal inventory over the past few years. It's a new UI giving the player the possibility to just pick up stuff on the go. The existing personal inventory can be a bit cumbersome when trying to pick up ammo in a firefighter and things like that. So the new loot screen aims to address those issues. Now when the player goes over to a body or a box, it, it can quickly press F and this will bring up the new loot screen. This menu is a simplified version of the player's loadout and the entity they are looting. You'll see the looted entity items on the top and the player's... All right, sorry about that. Windows causing problems, and of course dogs going crazy. Where were we? We were at Lens and Visor. So, I think there's a lot of really good information here. They did a great job of, of summarizing everything, making it look a lot better than what we have right now. Um, still not sure about notifications. I think they're still quite out there, and I'm wondering what they decide means this shows up here versus down here. Reputation stuff is pretty cool looking. Um, it's not the 3D. We keep seeing sometimes we see like these 3D icons. And then sometimes we see them in 2D like this. I'm wondering what's the difference between those two? It may be just, just different times out. of development. See, now they're in 2D. So maybe they just change the style at some point. Because they're kind of all 2D now. If you're looking at a kiosk, maybe we just want to show the control. Yeah, different builds. Maybe they just changed up the style. If something on. else shows on screen that would overlap one of those, it'll, one of the lowest priority ones will dynamically turn off and it'll all fit nicely onto screen again. Previously, all notifications were shown in the center of the screen, which could get a bit busy. We've now introduced the concept of low priority notifications, which anything that's not super important to you will show in a box down in the bottom right of the screen. Does anybody not like the uh, combat stack in the bottom right? toggle option 2d or 3d icons that'd be a little weird now everything looks like it's showing up in 2d that must have been a style that they just decided was not working and to be quite honest i think the 2d does look better i was i found the the ones that they were showing us a little bit weird um i'll, I'll show you guys what i'm talking about you can probably find it in one of these Nope, because they're not trying to show off UI here. You can make a request via AT. Um, here we go. Probably see it here.
No, oh, were weapons. they 2D here too? No, so you can kind of see it. Recoil is very sensible for a game. Here we go. We will be able to have eight times and 16 times zoom or two times and four times zoom. And because our new so you see the, uh, how, the, how different this icon is. It's got like a little bit of a 3D. All of it, actually. Look at this. This is definitely... Wow. I did not realize how much this UI progressed just in those weeks. The difference between that and this. On the helmets you're wearing. And what? Looks much better now. Yeah, I like it a lot better. This new dynamic region gives us... These icons look way cleaner, especially that, that reputation one. It's good. It's good. That's one of the best parts about being able to see stuff get updated throughout the ISC season and not just like over the course of years. I think my head is in the way. Hey, get out of the way, head. Yes, stupid dick. All right, here we go. So this is the old one, or this is the new one, I'm sorry. It's definitely got more of a flat 2D look to it. And then this is the old one, which is more sort of 3D looking. I think it's a little bit blown out with the lighting, too much color in the background. Looks cleaner like this. And then uh, this is on the reputation and stuff on the other side. It could be different based on helmets. All this could be different helmets, which would be interesting because I don't, Nah, it looks like the UI itself is different too. Don't think they mentioned helmets being different in terms of their own designs. That would be interesting. Either way, I do like this style better, whatever it is. Set your visor and lens. Oi, GTA stars? <laughs> GTA invented stars. This is Star Citizen, buddy. We don't use anything but stars. Could be a military helmet, you're right. All right, the other UI update we're getting is the player interaction experience, something that I don't think they've actually touched on for ISC just yet. So we'll show you that segment from CitizenCon. This is basically just updating how we interact with the game. It's taking a system we already have, the personal interaction experience wheel, and making it more useful um, and more intuitive. I think the best part of this though is that it's building a default action to the F key. So instead of holding F and clicking to activate something, you just tap the F button like, you know, a normal game. And then on top of that, you can change what that default action is um, and, and a bunch of different other kinds of stuff. This is a pretty cool system. I'll give you, let you get the overview here. Check it out. An object has more than one interaction. Well, for that, you can just simply hold in like using the inner thoughts. So we're removing that. <laughs> So what happens if an object has more than one interaction? Well, for that, you can just simply hold in old half and this will bring you the new interaction wheel. So this is our new interaction wheel. It will be focusing on the item. And you can see that up to two of the interactions have a star icon. So this is related to another system that you are bringing to you that we call in the default item actions. So this allows us to have a primary interaction, that's the one that shows on the prompt, and a secondary interaction. So these are default actions that you can easily trigger using shortcuts. So this change, these actions will change based on the combination of the item, the player, and the environment state. And although designers do choose the default actions that we bring to you, you are fully able to customize them to fit your preferences and playing style. So let's take a look at this in action. Here you can see the prompts that change depending on your focus. Now let's bring up the wheel. And you know, I really like my plushies, so I want to inspect them when I find them around. So I'm changing that to my primary. And you'll see that does not affect only the item they are interacting with, but any item that falls into the same category. Go next. OK. So I've shown you some features that improve. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I'm pretty sure we did see this in ISC somewhere. I 
feel like that was one of the first things we saw. Is it this one? No, is this whole thing about branding? Wow. The due diligence. Mm, is this one? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Okay, check this out. Well, it was better when it was piss pit. It used to be piss pit? Yeah. Player interactions. Yeah, it could. Yeah. I, they will have different UI for helmets and stuff, but I don't think they've done it yet. I think that's something that we'll probably do later. Um, highest partially in the ETF builds. Okay. You haven't seen the F, F default action yet? Please soon. Yeah, so, so let's talk about the new pie piss. Let's stop saying. <laughs> piss pie. I was too late to change it. I like to say PIS because, yep, sounds better. <laughs> I try to try to avoid HR complaints. <laughs> so the burning question is, what is Pi Piss? Uh, well, it's everything you interact with around you and how you go about doing that. not always easy to select the interaction that you're looking for. You have to drag your cursor then to make your selection. Do you guys are having and problems on the stream on YouTube? Are we still here? Hello? Man, the internet's not, not doing well today. You guys are good? Okay. This... I hate this. I f***ing hate this. This is the bane of my existence, these menus. It makes me not want to loot anything. This combined with the, uh, the looting menu. Oh, man. It's going to make this so much better. Just being able to do things in the game. Looting, picking things up, storing things, whatever. You have to drag your cursor then to make your selection. And it's not really very fast or intuitive. And in general, it got in the way of you doing what you wanted. It added an extra layer of menuing that wasn't necessary. But there's some things that we wanted to solve, and that's what the new system does. So with the new personal interaction experience, uh, we have multiple ways of improving how you interact with the items around you. So we've released little parts of the new system in the past with the pit wheel and the quick select wheels and the control hints. This is by far the biggest iteration on it and will totally change how you interact with things in the world. We've introduced the new interaction prompt, uh, which will show you which item you will interact with by just tapping F and will also show you the type of interaction that will be performed. So the new system, the players don't have to go into interaction mode to interact with the objects. Uh, we've updated that uh, to have a, an on-screen icon. Uh, it gives you the input that you need to press, and it gives you an idea of what you're actually going to do when you press it. So that ambiguity of, am I in range? Uh, is it the item I'm going to interact with? It's gone. Uh, you've got an immediate bit of feedback that tells you what you're going to interact with, what you need to press to interact with it, and what you'll do when you interact with it. So if you're looking at a plushie on the desk, it'll show an F above it with grab, and you can just pick that item up with that. We've also introduced the personal interaction wheel which instead of the list view will now give us a nice radio menu that lets you select exactly what you want to do in a much more intuitive manner. And with Some people hate the radio mem mem menu compared to a list. Um, but as somebody who is also going to be using a controller while I, while I play, I, I do appreciate it that I can use both doing this. Um, that being said, I'm still not convinced on the design. I'll have to see after using it. A wheel, it's much more seamless and it feels more like there's no barrier between you and the interactions. And that's locked the screen. So I believe the ship we were just seeing is the Carrick. You're always selecting something uh, and it's 99% you know, of the time what you want to interact with. Don't sneeze while you're pressing the button. It's much more intuitive, uh, it's much easier to use. And that option, uh, that, that problem I mentioned where if you're trying to interact with what's in your hand, that's gone. Now the new system just opens the wheel and you select what you want to do with what's in your hand, it just works. So this new interaction wheel plays really nicely with default item actions, which has been in development for a while, but it needed the whole system uh, to come together as one before we released it. If, for example, you're out mining gems after blowing up rocks with uh, your multi-tool, you might want to pick a gem up and look at it. 
or you might want to just store it directly in your backpack. You now have got the option to customize and say, uh, want to look down at that piece of gem? Show me the prompt. It's always going to show store. Or it's always going to show carry or inspect. It's up to you. And you can change that on the fly and it'll remember it. And it just allows you to customize your own experience. Now the player doesn't have to go to interaction mode to make a selection. It can just simply tap to trigger the behavior. The new system is entirely data-driven, so in, from our perspective, it makes it really easy to customize from a designer's point of view. And again, because we've set up that data, Yay. you can then customize it yourself. Person, that person literally would not have lived if they were using the old looting system. Yeah. The new system is entirely data-driven, so in, from our perspective, it makes Would have still been really trying to select the right word. From a designer's point of view. Would have been and dead. Again, because we've set up dead. that data, you can then customize it yourself. It allows you to customize the primary and the secondary interaction. So you can change what just tapping F while looking at something does. If the player changes the, the default item on that item, the, the selection will be saved across all the items that match that state and the, and the item category. It picks up on what you want to do with different item types. So if you want to cuddle the plushie, you can set that to be your default inspect. If you want to be picking up um, golden memons and storing them directly whilst you're harvesting, you can set store to be your default, and then that's the way it'll stay. Love that. If you want to equip uh, ammo as soon as you come across it to your suit, you can set that as your default item action. So it's something that, with a little bit of interaction from yourself, means that you can customize and tweak your own play experience and really rough out the edges uh, in terms of your minute to minute gameplay and how you interact with things. We've also introduced a new scoring system for interaction points that allows us to better select which interaction point is of interest to the player. This is based on distance from the player, angle to the cursor or center screen, and whether it's on screen or not. It also allows us to interact with things that aren't quite on screen, so if there's a trolley handle just below you, uh, you'll be able to tap F and you should just grab it. This makes it a lot more intuitive. Something on the ground can have a different default action to something in your hand. This is all set up and customized through the... We're not actually wheel. looking at the looting screen right now. This is the new interaction system. The looting screen was from a little while ago. ...make the selection. You can just simply tap or double tap to trigger the secondary uh, action, and that should be a yeah, much easier experience for the player. We'll forget about what was there before. It'll feel like it has always belonged, you won't be able to live without it, really. That's just some of the things our team has been working on over the last few months and bringing to SE Alpha 323. We're looking at bringing you lots more stuff from our work on Squadron 42 into, into Star Citizen. Uh, we're really excited to get that into your hands to improve your overall player experience, uh, the way you travel through the verse. Yeah, when you get your hands on it, please let us know what you think. We're really excited to find out. So what did we learn this week? Well. We learned that EVA looks sick. Yeah, all right, we'll get to EVA too. So that was the uh, interaction system. I think it's a solid improvement on what we already have. I'm glad that they have something, they've finally gotten the interaction system to replace the, um, the actual like menu that pops up when you try to interact with stuff. They were super disconnected. A lot of people didn't even know um, this is a system that's existed for years already. The, the whole wheel control thing, it's not new. Um, don't worry about this becoming Modern Warfare. It's not, they're not making a sudden shift towards controllers. This is a, a UI we've been using for a while. I think they're just bringing it over to the actual interaction system so people know that it works and it's there. And I think it works a little bit better than a list. Must be tedious, always answering the same questions, always talking about the same things. Hey man. If they had a if they had a better knowledge base repository thingy, you know, it'd be a little easier. Hope more people play with controllers so you can finish them in PvP FPS. <laughs> I'm gonna use a controller. I I don't know about all of you. I'm not a only control with one thing kind of person. I'm my plan is to have dual sticks, a mouse, and keyboard, and a controller. Because there are different reasons to play with those different things. So I'm I'm happy that all of them are getting supported pretty well. Like that they're bypassing the loot screen for some things with a single quick single button press. Yeah. And that's that's kind of what I was talking about. Having those physical interactions is nice because you don't want to have to go into a loot screen unless you're actually doing some real management. You kind of just want to look at something and pick it up real quick. You know, 
do your do your moving around. Somebody said, can you wiggle while looting? Absolutely. You can just sit there and continuously press the uh, the F key and pick stuff up like they're showing here. That's actually the beauty of the new system is now we have a default action. So you don't have to go into the inventory to start looting. So that ambiguity. There is one while in the ship. Most folks do not know about that. One what? What's in the ship? What's in the ship? J Do, thanks for dropping by. Have a good time on Daymar. You like mouse and keyboard for most things. Would love a controller for driving and Hotas for flying. Just move seamlessly from one to the other. PC doesn't mean anti gamepad, amigos. No, it does not. I think. I think it's completely reasonable to play a PC game with a controller. Most of them are made by the same company anyways. Squadron, yeah, Squadron should be playable with controller for sure. Girl, what the f... Nom, 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 nom. Alrighty, where were we? Um, back to the list. Player interaction system check. I think that's all the UI stuff we were going over. So let's jump into the actual. I'm gonna skip Arena Commander, um, because that's a whole nother that's a whole nother bag. Let's talk about the item banks we've got here, the personal and instanced hangers as well. From people in Evo, how are how is the UI testing going? Sound like you guys were saying a lot of it is in, but the interaction stuff is not fully in. The default action changing and stuff like that. But the star map, local area map, um, the looting screen, the new HUD, all that stuff is already in Evoke being tested. Massive nod to controller gameplay, super simple single button. But it has been there. I don't even know when they first put it in. Do they have UI sections? Where would that be? Here's that first inventory they put in. So I think it was before that. I think it was around Microtech coming into the game. Player interaction system improvements. Uh, let's play or select dialogue. Oh, nope. So it was after that. No, I can't find it. Could have sworn it was it was around this time. But you know what? I'm probably skipping over it. I keep doing that today. At some point they added it in though. This this whole radio menu thing is is not new for them necessarily. Play Counter Strike with a controller, good luck. Well, my friend, this is definitely not Counter Strike. Don't forget, this isn't just an FPS, guys. This is a game that's being made for ship flight, for car driving, for shooting, for picking things up for swimming for a, a lot of things. So they're they're trying not to, to focus necessarily on any one type of gameplay uh, so much that it overrides all the others. And they've, I think they've already done that quite a bit when it comes to combat. But it's, it's certainly not trying to compete with the more hardcore FPS games. As much as people want it to be Space Tarkov. <laughs> All right, where are the hangers? This is a big one. Let's talk about persistent hangers. Here is probably the biggest change in 323. One of the bigger ones that I think we've ever seen in the game. Persistent hangers and cargo.
toes. So let's start with persistent hangers. What are they and what does that mean? So a persistent hanger is an instance hanger that is going to be assigned to you whenever you select your home location when logging into the game for the first time for a patch. When that happens, what we do is we determine the largest ship that you have and then entitle to you a persistent hanger that's of the size needed to facilitate that ship. Whenever you go into that hanger into the game, that hanger at your home location is always your hanger and you'll be able to use it like your home. You'll be able to keep things in the hangar. You'll be able to leave things around. You can invite friends in. You can treat it like your own little oasis. So let's talk about for these personal hangars, how do you actually get into them? Please proceed to sign landing You can make a request via ATC for landing. And when we do that, we'll check to see if you have any personal hangers entitled to you, you'll be able to enter in using largely the same methodology that you do now, land, and then you can just hang out in there. As far as what can you actually do with your personal hanger and what kinds of things can you decorate with it, what we're gonna do is allow you to call anything in your inventory up via that freight elevator. You can pick it up off the freight elevator either with your hands or using the tractor beam and just strew it about your location however you pick. Death trolleys. I don't know when they're going to be fixing VOIP FYP. I hope it's soon though, because we really need some better VOIP stuff. You play with the head tracker, Hotas, and pedals. Love it, dude. It's it's awesome. This is the first game I've played where I've controlled it with anything other than one medium, and I really like the um, the ability to fly with fly with uh, stick and and uh, throttle, and then switch over to like. A controller when i'm just doing the the basic sort of walking around kind of stuff i don't use a controller yet i only use it when i'm filming but it's really nice i personally my my wrists are not made for mouse and keyboard these tables tables man i like to sit on a couch you know or a chair lean back a little bit we have the keyboard hover in front of me then i'm good hope we can go beyond the 10 to 15 minutes idle kick from server limits if we're in our own hangar well in terms of yeah you being in the hangar i'm pretty sure it's oh, as long as you want in terms of not being at the controls, I think it's about the same. How is the controller for filming? Do you have to set custom binds? No, the binds are pretty much already laid out for you. You can change a couple of things, but it's pretty simple. I use the right thumbstick to kind of pivot my camera around and uh, the bumpers and stuff to, to move it as I need. It's very nice, though. You get a lot more smooth shots like that. Veg out in your hangar, spend the day looking at your ships, or just idly stand by arranging your personal inventory. Just sit there and look at your ships. Thank God. It's a home for once. Also in the hangars, you'll notice several new kiosks. We have the Freight Elevator Kiosk, which has a brand new uh, UI and uh, inventory system to deal with right. uh, large... This is a UI that they have just... A brand new... Uh, U I'm pretty sure this is the only time they've ever shown us this UI, and they just... Nothing else. Didn't tell us anything else. UI and um, this is the UI that depicts, I think, your your freight elevator, basically, and what's on it. And uh, inventory system to deal. And then it gives you a nice three D layout of what you're what you're calling. I mean, this is getting pretty complex. I really like to to see something that seems like it's a little bit more focused on the actual freight and not just a menu. But they haven't told us much else about how this works with uh, large volumes of cargo. Amen, You're Couch Citizen for the on win. On the left-hand side, a section that is showing the contents of the platform itself. And on the right-hand side, similar inventory layout with all your armor and weapons and items. And then you decide what you want to spawn in, um, in the freight elevator. The freight elevator then comes up and then you can start doing like loading and unloading of various cargo into your ship and so on. If you're considerate about how you're loading things and you're trying to optimize your loading times, it'll give you a lot of power as far as, for example, making sure that certain kinds of things are front loaded on the platform to make your multi-crew loading as streamlined as possible. And anything that's in your inventory, you're going to be able to call up 
Some things you might have to put into an inventory container box. We're talking 8, 16, 24, even 32 SU size container boxes that you can put large items in. Now you can raise that up on the platform, including in collections, transfer that very quickly onto your ship, and then take them to another location. It's basically the death of the inventory as we know it, right? There's no more getting into your ship and just dragging things over to the menu. You have to go and get them and bring them to your ship. Which you could almost consider like a small freight elevator in a way, in that you can retrieve personal items such as clothing, armor, and weapons. Because the item that's being delivered will be delivered in a tray that's in the same machine. So you interact that kind of like you interact with a loot box and you get that out. So no other player can actually physically get anything from your local inventory. And uh, these item banks can be found not just within the hangars, but also the wider location, such as your HABs and other key areas of a location to retrieve um, your personal items. Since you can't interact with, the, with your inventory Oh anymore, yeah, you'll be able to pay people to load it for you. Don't worry about that. You need to have enough item banks around each location so you don't block each other um, from accessing an, an, a terminal, right? It's just a quicker way to get a quick gun or a few meta pins or your armor without having to load it up from the freight elevator. And the last kiosk that I want to talk about is the ASOP terminal which we have positioned in the hangar, so you can request your ships from within the hangar and not just the spaceport. So they will still remain in the spaceport, so if you don't have a personal hangar in your location, you can request your ship also from there. What we're doing is we're changing the way that the ships spawn in the game. You can now request your ships from within the hangar and they will appear to you, but they won't just come out of thin air. What happens is the the whole of the floor will open up. You get this like amazing view of the, of the hangar, the lights dim, the doors open. And the landing platform will be rising up towards you and your ship will be there. We try to balance it in a way that it doesn't take too much time for you, but also that it feels like it has the right weight to it, but also you don't have to wait for it too long. So now you have a seamless transition and a realistic way I like that. of storing it's, your ships away. I you think it's something we've been really waiting for for a while now. Just give us a more seamless idea of spawning our ships and, and just popping into existence. Changed. But we re have classified ships to fit into the medium that were once classified as small. So hopefully a much better player experience than there has been before. And it's been interesting to take uh, the design of a elevator and the door uh, and extrapolate that across multiple sizes, so in some cases you can kind of widen out the door and use the same shapes, and in some cases you need to think really about how those shapes work, and sometimes they don't work within a small door, for example, when it did work in a much wider door. So we've had to play around with that and keep them looking consistent with each other, but also uh, adapt those shapes to work for each size. So this is an actualization of a long-term goal for this entire cargo career, to make the whole thing feel more real. It means that the whole experience is gonna allow for manual loading. It'll also feel more rewarding because it'll give you more interesting choices to make throughout the process. It'll make multi-crewing a more interesting and useful experience. It's going to just make the whole experience a more skill intensive and interesting and uh, tactile. Another thing that we've talked about is automated loading in the games. This allows uh, you here to we still do commodity trading without needing to actually move the boxes yourself. It will be an option in the commodity. Okay, so this loading time, like this is only 100 <laughs> AUEC different for 10 minute loading time, which is kind of crazy. So I'm guessing these these prices are going to change quite a bit. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to start waiting. You're going to want to get busy in the city. Terminal. Whenever you go and you pick the destination inventory, you'll be confronted with several options. One is the location inventory. The next will be all your ships that are at the location. If you choose a ship, you'll have the option to have it be automatically unloaded or loaded for you, of course, with an added cost. The ship has to be stored to allow for the transfer, and it will be time-locked while that transfer is occurring. Different locations in the game will have different amounts of time, places that are more optimized for 
trade are going to allow for faster transfer. You'll be able to still do the trading. You just have to wait a little bit and pay a bit more money. So your profits won't be quite as good in that case. Once the automatic loading process is finished, you can just go to the ASOP terminal in the hangar, access it, raise it, and go off and you're on your way. Hey, if you guys don't want to wait, you can always load it yourself. If you care about cargo, this is going to be transformational. But even if you're not interested in cargo at all, it's still a foundational change for the game that fundamentally changes principles. That's why I like it, because you don't have to you don't have to have them uh, load it. You know, with the current system in this game, basically you have one choice. You press a button, it gets loaded. Now you can say, okay, I've got other things to do. You go ahead and load it for me, or you could do it yourself, which is nice. Inevitably, we're always going to have to load it at some point. So I feel like the having somebody else load it for you is the, the, the opt out kind of. The only other option would then be not physicalizing cargo. Which some people don't like. Some people don't want the cargo to be physicalized. And your player. So that's uh, hangers and freight elevators. Changing up the system, how we load and unload stuff, how you spawn stuff, and how you kind of take care of your stuff. We'll have to see how that goes. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of contention when it comes in. Uh, it's still tentative. I think somebody was saying that it is in... Um, some of it is in the in Evo, but not all of it just yet. Can can anyone confirm from Evo? Cargo isn't your primary interest, but you must admit you're looking forward to this more immersive this way. I'm not too worried about it because I'm not a cargo hauler. Um, but when I do haul cargo, I like I like what I'm looking at and seeing. Like when I have to do it for you know something random. Except you can't load cargo in the Carrick. There are going to be some problems at first. Yeah. Not being able to access the Carrick's actual cargo area would be one of them. Is there even room to remove the saddlebags when it's landed in the hangar? Talking about the mole? Don't know. It's not an Evo yet. Not even the persistent hangars. While waiting, they need to get the arcade games up and running too. Yeah, and the sim pods, please. Kill time by telling a random inappropriate story to the clerk at Kelto. Ah, there you go. New Evo patch today. Maybe that has the hangers in it. Hopefully. When do they ever put out a complete feature? They don't, they don't yet. Um, all right. Where do we go from here? <laughs> Creature hunting, item banks, arena commander, inventory, or sorry, hangers, Moby Glass, FPS maps, new missions from cargo hauling. This is something they haven't even talked about yet. Making use of freight elevator features, this mission type will have players hauling large quantities of cargo to earn both AUEC and reputation. We don't know anything about this as far as the new year is concerned, but I can show you what they said about it last year. It's not much. But it is... Certainly, it sounds good. Here's how they're kind of changing cargo. Again, this isn't confirmed for 323. This is the stuff they're going to be doing, so we still have to wait to see what's going to be happening with 323 specifically, but... Here's what they have to say. Different aspects of cargo and freight on behalf of art and design. Yeah. My name is Nick Etheridge and I'm an assistant environment art director. So obviously cargo isn't just about boxes. It's a big part of the game. Almost every aspect of the game has some kind of involvement with cargo. And I'm going to briefly go through some of them now. So. Let's start with missions. How will hauling contracts work in-game? We'll be introducing the Interstellar Transport Guild, as well as, form as, well as formalizing <laughs> some of the main hauling and cargo companies that you'll be working with. So that's, that's already a big one. They're basically adding factions to the jobs you're doing, like these courier missions, you do them, but the people that are assigning them are just a name. 
now they're going to add actual reputation to these companies like how crusader has reputation for doing combat missions so you'll be able to work your way up a cargo hauling chain of missions and eventually you'll be doing something much larger than other people would as you do more hauling contracts you will build up your reputation and relationship with the guild this will lead you to gaining more lucrative contracts for specialized cargo and destinations such as different forms of hazardous cargo perishable cargo, riskier routes, and, and more. So what do I mean by hazardous and perishable? Well, as you know, there's lots of commodities in the game, and different commodities have different properties. As you know, with events like Xenothreat, we have some special cargo types with different attributes, such as time-sensitive cargo or quantum-sensitive cargo. But those were a small selection for the event, and they were the two-handed carryable types anyway. We'll be expanding those types, plus lots more types, to the wider game and to these hauling contracts. So how does this affect gameplay? It will affect the choices you make when you are handling, storing, and traveling with the cargo. For example, with size and weight, is it carryable? Do you need a tractor beam? What type of tractor beam do you need? Is it a handheld one or a ship tractor beam? Some containers can only be moved with ship tractor beams, for example. With health, has the container got good integrity? Is it holding fragile goods? Do you need to handle it with care? You can't just throw all containers about. For temperature control, do you need to ensure the container is powered so it can keep the contents cool? Or do you need to get to your destination quickly um, otherwise, the contents may perish. For security, can the container be locked or hacked? Can the contents be scanned or is the container tracked? Will there be pirates or law after you when you're holding this container? Has a containment? Is it radioactive? You might need the right uh, protection against it, as you may have seen in Jens's presentation earlier. Can it explode? You might not want to put these containers on a more exposed section of your ship. And many of these attributes are, are going to be visually distinctive. So conversely, if you want to steal, for example, some cargo on a hull C, which does have very exposed cargo containers, you might want to avoid shooting blindly and accidentally blowing up your potential profits. So look out for those types of containers. Back to mission progression. We'll be introducing perks and rewards as part of fulfilling contracts and raising reputation with these companies. For rewards, we'll have branded ship and tool skins, branded clothing. There will be collectibles to decorate your hab, hangar, or ship, or you can put them anywhere you want. And there'll be more exclu exclusive rewards that we'll be revealing later. For <laughs> Thank you. Love this. And, and he goes on to specify that these are rewards that you can only get in game. You can't buy them. You know, they're between this and some of the other stuff they were talking about with, with um, factions and the rewards you can get from there. It sounds like they're starting to focus a little bit more on actually gamifying rewards and getting us a little bit more stuff. So that's cargo missions. We've basically heard nothing about that this quarter. This is one of the more likely things to leave the patch, I think, before it goes live. But it also is one of the older ones we were hearing about in monthly reports. They were talking about, mm, they were talking about cargo missions probably as long as a year ago. Um, say Star Citizen April 2024 monthly report might be one month too late. Oh, we want 2023. might actually be the March one I'm thinking of. Let's see. Hauling. Nope. How about here? Hauling. No. Okay. What about cargo? Hmm. We are looking at adding general cargo to missions. No. Cargo elevators. No. Fixing cargo. No. So maybe it was even longer ago than this. New cargo deck, external loading, cargo, blah, 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 including the new cargo features. Yeah, I guess 
Was it even earlier? So they were talking about it. Actually, it might have been the year prior, 2022, because they were talking about it. And then suddenly mining missions came out of nowhere. Oh. Right. Yeah, okay, I'm dumb. It's the mining missions I was thinking of. Cargo missions we actually hadn't heard about very much. This song is going to kill me. Please stop. My bad. Misinformation over here. Uh, but let's move on then. Blockade Runner, dynamic event. Not really too much to know about this. It's it's another event. It's kind of like a remade Nine Tails Lockdown for those who have played that. Uh, pretty easy to cover. This one. What we hmm. Where is Nine Tails Lockdown? Or er, do they not talk about it here? I don't know where they talk about it. Actually, they talk about it somewhere, but. This is a ba basically a new if global it's event. Shoot nine tails and steal their stuff, then yeah, I'm all for it. <laughs> Too many tabs. All right, this is basically a global event where some people are supposed to transport some cargo to a space station that's been blockaded by nine tails. Uh, they need an escort to get in there. You get in, you trade the stuff, you get out. That's the event. Sounds simple, but it gets complex when you start actually going through it. EVA tier two is another one that's coming that I hear sounds. It, it is very much helping the game and how we play the game. Um, it's making things a lot smoother that used to be janky. And just overall improving the feel of playing the game. That one we have seen. Somewhere around here we go. Check it out. Here's what EVA is looking like right now. Into 323. Patient was a problem. You never really knew which kind of way your body was in. The upright pose was a little bit awkward for traversing spaces as well. You couldn't really fit into narrow spaces and it just, it was a bit restrictive for transitioning around space stations and things like that, especially interior spaces. In addition to that, the sort of volume you take in order to rotate and look around uh, is, is huge. It's basically rotating your body up every time you just, you know, look to the right, look up, etc. That doesn't look terrible but it doesn't look great and it, it doesn't feel wonderful if you're in a confined space because again you're clipping against everything i just don't really think it fit with what we want to do in our game it's, it's not a bad system it got us to where we are today but we want to make improvements and there are other features and systems that we need to tie into eva uh, which brings us to what's coming uh, this year so there's multiple aspects of the new va system that makes it uh, a lot more versatile the first is that when you start looking around, uh, it's your camera and your head that's moving. Uh, your body most of the time doesn't. So if I'm heading in a certain direction and I want to see what's behind me, uh, I can just look behind me, but I see my body. I get that instant frame of reference as to where I am, where my body is, and you know, it, it just grounds the experience. So with the new system, we put the player into a more prone pose, kind of a superhero pose makes them a much smaller silhouette when traversing around areas. Can you show us how the EVA works? Show us how the EVA works. So now, EVA works like this. You, pop, you, you move forward and you, you just fly. And, <laughs> yeah, when you, when you turn, when you rotate. and when you rotate, you're like, the footprint of the character That's a nice turn. doesn't start to change. So if I want to look around in this tight-knit space, I'm not suddenly spinning around and locking all the things off the shelves. I'm, I'm just looking around, which means that the, the metrics we can support for that feature suddenly become much more versatile. You can get on a vent rather than not being able to fit into a room. It's also uh, a lot prettier uh, to watch someone who's got a weapon or just looking around, rotating around as they're doing so. From the outside, it looks better. From the player experience, uh, it just, just really helps out. Uh, you know where you are and what you're doing. Looks way better. We've smoothed out transitions entering and exiting EVA. So no more face planting unless you really, really try. <laughs> In new EVA, you can just press forward and you fly if you 
release the button, you keep flying, while you still can rotate and look around. Yeah, we've allowed it so you can turn on the spot without altering your silhouette, um, which is quite nice for interior traversal again. It feels a lot more natural, a lot more responsive to the player. Yeah, we're going like a like we. Yeah. <laughs> the features we're going to be bringing out um, at some point later soon. Yeah, so this is future stuff. We've got zero G traversal, and that's you attaching to a surface. In the previous system, uh, again, because the character was upright the entire time, it, it just wouldn't have gelled well with that feature. Um, you're effectively in prone, but attached to a surface, uh, and, and you're moving along that surface or gliding along it if you sprint. That just transitions really nicely from the pose we have for zero-g traversal to the EVA pose. Uh, it's almost exactly the same. It's also very similar to prone. So, for example, if, if you were in an event and all of a sudden the gravity went out, you could run along it in zero-g traversal or move around it in EVA without changing what your body's doing, uh, which just means that it's a far more seamless experience um, there's not much less chance of anything going wrong as a result of that as well. If you're noticing also, also the maneuvering jets are only firing when they turn. Yeah. Watch here. Uh, which just means that it's a far more seamless experience. Um, there's not much so I know there's supposed to be, we're, uh, in Evocati, can anybody confirm, are you flying uncoupled as you EVA? That's a big part of this too. You kind of, you can just set yourself going and then you're just good to go. Just floating. Just float. No mag boots. Not yet. Sorry, you just got to grab the ground. <laughs> Fresh haircut. Hey, yeah. I'm nice and kind of bald now. Much less chance of anything going wrong as a result of that as well. Good to see you, Luna Maria. We've also introduced the EVA fuel and momentum. So once you start traveling forwards in one direction, you'll keep going in that direction until you press another input or the space break to stop. This becomes <laughs> a space. Um, okay, so there's the confirmation, but don't know if he's, I think he's talking about for later here. Actually important when we introduce EVA fuel. Yeah, there you so go. So you'll have a finite amount of fuel and just that little boost could be enough just to get you back to the safety of the space station or your ship. It sets us up nicely for zero G push pull, which comes further down the line. So in terms of what that means for you as a player and what you're gonna be doing with this feature, uh, it allows us to use EVA to get you guys going from your ship to another ship, from your ship to an abandoned space station. You can fly inside... Um, God dang it, Scott. <laughs> ...ships and space stations without gravity now, um, without fear of bashing your head and your legs all over the place. Uh, it, it really makes it a much more smooth and, and easy to use uh, system. And honestly, at the end of the day, it's, it's just more fun. I enjoy just flying in and out of test levels between ships, etc. Uh, with the old system, it's a bit slow and lackluster. With this, I feel like I'm a superhero while I'm going around in space. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back. So yeah, the new EVA feature. Uh, as you guys see it today, it's hopefully going to look even better when it, once it gets um, into your hands. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to see what you guys think of it. So this sounds like another one that is basically oh, all but confirmed. It's tentative on here, but from what we're hearing from Evocati, it is testing very well, smoothly, working almost perfectly. So I think it's, we're pretty much going to see that. Thank you, Playing Ketchup Game, for the sub. Appreciate you on that, Prime. A little, little busy this morning, no problem. Always good time to have some Star Citizen in the background. Reputation. They haven't really talked about reputation changes, have they? I don't have too much to say on it other than this is going to be the change that decides whether or not you can go into certain places or not. Um, for the longest time, we've been playing Star Citizen with the idea that the game protects you, armistice zones, places where you don't have anything activated, all that kind of stuff. That's going to go at some point. It's not going to be, oh, in this area, you can't have weapons on and in this area, you can't have so and so. I mean, it will be like that, but instead of the game just automatically telling you, no, you can't do that and cutting you off with no reason there will be security there will be npcs ai that tell you hey you gotta take your weapons off you can't walk into this city kind of stuff that is enforced based on reputation so if you look at these getting added to 323 they say the reputation system is being updated so that players can affect their long-term relationship 
a reputation with in-game organizations via means outside of missions, such as reduction of reputation for killing a member of that faction. AI belonging to certain factions will react differently based on their reputation with you. Being an ally provides the player benefits such as more generous friendly fire thresholds and providing medical aid. Being an enemy will mean harsher friendly fire thresholds and may result in an attack on site. Lawful organizations will not attack on site as long as they are in a monitored zone, whereas unlawful factions will attack on site no matter what. This is the foundation for which players, which allows players to become allies with in-world criminal factions and enables places like Grimhex to enforce their own law. So this is, um, this is a very important part of reputation that's finally taken a step forward we've been needing for a long time. And that is basically just NPCs' ability to enforce the rules that they see in their territory. It's going to be extra important for Pyro, and I'm glad they're getting it in now. You don't think there will be rep until Pyro is live? What do you mean by that? We already have rep. Any news about 323? <laughs> um, just the, the whole thing? There will be some weapon-free zones, you imagine, like personal hangar and apartments. Um, maybe, I don't know if they're going to enforce that by, like, invisible rules, though. Since you own that space, you might just shoot people, you know? No news on when 323 comes out, though, or when it's releasing. All right, so that is, I think we got through all of the gameplay. Holy crap. Next up, modularity. With, uh, the... Retaliator Gold Standard, we're actually getting ship modularity, finally, after all this time. Implementing the ability to swap modular sections of certain vehicles to change their function. There is a whole bunch about this that we could talk about. I won't get super into it, but we just did have a captain's table on the Astro Pubs channel. Good friend, uh, fellow YouTuber, go check him out. We just talked about ship modularity a lot. Me, him, uh, Zyron, and HC Vertigo. Great talk. But ship modularity basically means that certain ships will be able to start trading out the parts of the ships that, you know, can be traded out. And they're starting with the Retaliator, as we kind of figured with the teasers that they showed at CitizenCon and the stuff they were saying at Invictus last year. But it's good to finally see ship modularity coming in because, dang, it's been, it's been, we've been waiting for a long time. Remember three years ago when you first talked about the gold standard and modularity? I'm glad it's being worked in, but this ship will have to go through another gold standard pass in a couple of years. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not if they, if, if Maelstrom and engineering, I mean, they definitely got to be specking this for engineering. Maybe Maelstrom is an over the, over the counter push, you know, maybe they don't have to redo the ships for that. Really dug the chat with Loud Guns. It was a good talk. Loud Guns is, is great conversation. I love having them on the show. And engineering is a really interesting topic. <laughs> possible wave one tomorrow Woo. we'll see what happens there three twenty three is getting a lot of hype it's big it is big oh my gosh um we are there's a lot coming you know and it, some people are saying it doesn't matter. You guys can wait for another patch. That's fine. I'm going to love the hell out of this patch because it's looking good. Tally will be an OP cargo ship with its full HP. The combat cargo ship, huh? Had to interrupt the podcast to catch it live. Feathers, good to see you. How are you? Don't know when 323 is released. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not, April is seeing less and less likely, but if they do get it to PTU in the next few days, maybe. All right, master modes. Holy crap, master modes. I'm I think we're also getting we're getting master modes and the kind of combat fixes coming with master modes. Uh here's it sort of talking about what's coming with this cuz this is a hefty one and if you want any more talk about how, what this will include, I did a talk with Yogi on my podcast um a few weeks ago. Avenger one and Yogi joined me. If you just search, Hello. I mean, honestly, if you search, yeah. like, Star Citizen, uh, Yogi Clack, it'll probably pop up. So you check this out. 
we got a long good talk with a ton of detail about you know what this whole me this whole flight model includes i'm not looking to get into a discussion about it today folks i know people feel really strongly about this i'm i'm kind of done covering master modes i'm over the whole conversation because it took it took weeks but this is a gist of what we're going to be seeing for those of you who haven't heard of it yet what are master modes so master modes is a way for us to really kind of capitalize on what the ships are Basically, Master Modes are a new game feature that uh, change all the combat experience inside the, inside the game. So you'll have a mode for fighting in and a mode for flying from place to place then. A rework of the flight and combat system to essentially try and solve a lot of the problems that players have had with the flight experience. You can decide if you want to be in full combat mode or you're, you're just in transit or you want to get out of a situation as quick as possible. Master mode is the thing that makes ship combat exciting and making sure that the ships that you have in the game perform in the roles that we have envisioned for them. I like how they got themselves a new mascot for ISC. I wonder how this came about. Since uh, CitizenCon, we've been bringing Master Modes into Arena Commander. Progress has been quite good, showing off the new modes and letting people get their hands on it. Collecting the feedback, seeing how players respond to that online by monitoring how players react on social channels. Uh, we've been testing internally a lot. It's a very limited selection of ships, but even so, people seem to like it. So we've taken that feedback and carried on making progress and adapting it all to the rest of the ships as well. We've been watching how players play the game, monitoring analytics, putting it all together and sharing it with the devs who need to see it. So what I don't know is how much of the HUD that they're showing here, like the targeting and stuff. I don't, I'm not sure if that's included in this update, but mainly here they're talking about the flight model. How the hell do you go about converting 200 ships to be in this? Unfortunately, there's only really one way to do it, and uh, that's to not get too intimidated by the number. A team effort, we're uh, just cracking for it, really. The difficult part, of course, especially as a designer, is try to uh, understand the new uh, game dynamics that uh, the, the game system creates, especially in an environment like the PU, and then try to be able to deliver the proper game experience for every ship with a, you know, a different tuning. And that's quite difficult, but that's also what uh, is really interesting about bringing up a new feature. So we're moving each individual ship into an archetype, and we're going to rebalance that ship to the archetype as a starting point. And then basically, once that's complete, we're going to add the individuality into each ship. Each ship has... So this is definitely a pretty long multi-stage process. We've looked at every ship in the game, assigned them a base archetype so that you know what you're getting into from, from the get-go. All ships, based on how big they are and what kind of purpose they serve, will get an archetype type assigned to them. A typical archetype is a snap fighter. Very, very small, very agile, but it cannot dish out a lot of damage and it can also not receive a lot of damage before it pops. Light fighter. Very maneuverable, decent weapon loadout, and it's basically there for agility engagements. Medium fighter. Pretty agile for its size, but it has a lot more offensive firepower. Target destroyed. Heavy fighter. They don't maneuver well, but when you happen to be at the front of them, you can die very, very fast. Now, these are basic tuning archetypes that we have for our fighter ships class, and all ships in that size will be assigned to one of these things. However, based on the ship and what the purpose of the ship is, we have variations of that. For example, we have the interceptor variant of these tunings. This is a tuning variation that can apply to any of these archetypes. An interceptor tuning for a ship means that this ship exchanges the agility. Um, with agility, we mean the rotation rate and the lateral strafing accelerations simply for speed. So they will not be able to turn their velocity vector much. They will not be able to rotate much, but they will be very, very fast just going forward. Racing ships are like the base archetype that almost all racers ended up with so far are interceptors because racers prefer speed over everything else. 
but you want to pick the right racer for the right track. The other end of the range are our, let's call them fighter bomber tunings. That means we trade agility for simply durability. On top of the fighters, we just keep going with this. We have gunboats for ships that are constellation sized. We have corvettes for something like a, a hammerhead, right? So our, our hammerhead is for us is our anti-fighter corvette. Frigates are basically the biggest ship that players can control in the universe right now. So we're talking Idris, we're talking 890 jumps. I know that Idris players cannot control the Idris, but we're talking uh, ships like the Carrack. Those are frigates, really, really big ones, but also they will have variations in their tuning based on the brand or what the purpose of the ship is. So these are very big changes that are coming, but the main takeaway I would think the Carrack would fall into that Corvette class they had. Frames ...for the type of tuning you want to give a ship. It does not mean that every ship that you have in the verse will fit a, a specific archetype. There are ships which are in between. For example, the Saber. Is it a medium or a light fighter? It's somewhere in between. The Cutlass has not the durability of a heavy fighter, has, however, the turret of a heavy fighter, so it's somewhere in between. So there are ships which do not fit exactly into these frames. But this is the beauty of it, because these ships, we can make them fit anywhere where they want, we just need to make sure that the balance between them is right. Not everything fits in a box, and it would be very boring if it did. All right. I think that's enough of... Uh, precision targeting is a new way of aiming at specific I don't parts. know if precision targeting is coming in this patch. So we're just going to cover on master modes for now. Um, and that's that. I mean, definitely look more into it if you're interested. Uh, but I'm not going to... Like I said, we've, we've touched on it quite a bit. Let's talk about some of the FPS improvements we've been seeing. Dynamic crosshair is... is dynamic crosshair earlier on? I could just find it at CitizenCon. It's around here somewhere. There is so much stuff. Um, cheers. We also have new procedural animation over. I think they're doing scope changes too. Oh, <laughs> so to get our. If anyone plays a modern FPS, they know that optics are just gorgeous now. In, in all modern shooters, they look fantastic. And as you can see, we have zoomed in optics in the center. So we ha and then we have other things like parallax, like you see in real life. And they look gorgeous. And, um, so in general, all our sights and scopes have been overhauled to be more realistic with things like parallax, pincushion distortion, and things you'd expect from having a scope in general. And it differs manufacturer to manufacturer, right? So. All right, but here's the. Uh, a, this is the uh, actual dynamic, cross dynamic crosshair. The dynamic crosshair. Now, no more third-party uh, dynamic crosshair. Well, crosshairs now. So, if you have a look at this, this is our new crosshair. It's a crosshair that fits the aesthetic of Star Citizen. It's a crosshair that follows the barrel of the weapon, so you'll see exactly where a bullet is going to land, and it's projected from the visor using AR. Some visors won't have access to this crosshair, but some will use modified combat lenses. So if you don't want to use the crosshair, you can just use a different visor. As you can see, it works with recoil, and overall it just looks gorgeous. He does say you have to use a different visor to not use this dark crosshair. I do wonder if you'll be able to turn it off in the accessibility section, but the, it's a pretty small part of the update. I'm not sure if they're going to be including other things like the, the improved recoil and stuff or the new sound effects or any of that kind of stuff, but Crosshair is definitely on the roadmap. And I, it's, it's committed. Don't even know if it's an Evo, but it must be. Um, and then we've got some, some visual updates. The volumetric clouds update is one that we were actually expecting in 322, but it did get delayed. And it's looking to make the game look a lot more contrasty. The lighting's looking way better. Um, and yeah, overall, this is a great addition. They're adding ground fog, lighting, 
beams and huge Fisho, fixes to how Mumbai. clouds are rendered. And Check it out. In this video, we are showing all the features combined together. In addition, we made many improvements to cloud shaping to allow for more variation and details. The shape noise blending, a vertical variation has been improved a lot. Also, we made improvements to short and long distance read, and the tiling is less visible. And, and best of all, best of all, we're going to include all these new... F yeah, we'll just not let him say that part. <laughs> he was going to say it was in the next update, and it was not. So that's the cloud improvement stuff. Looking good. We'll see how it goes. We got image upscaling also planned, and they actually they showed a little bit of what they're doing with image upscaling here. Let's see if I can find that. Is it? As you know, as we talk about quite a bit, this company has built their own game engine here. Uh, they have a huge tech stack that they have built custom for what they need. And that gives them a lot of control over how this game renders and works graphically going forward. So here's one of the first improvements that they're bringing in now that they've got this rendering engine in a more mature state. It's been asked for for a long time. And we're proud to finally get it into your hands. We've got three different techniques we're going to be implementing. Uh, we've got CIGs, uh, we've got our own temple super resolution solution called TSR. We've got AMD Fidelity FX super resolution too, and we've got NVIDIA DLSS2 as well. Um, they each have different characteristics and hardware requirements and trade-offs, so it is important to get you all free so you could have a choice of what you want to look. On the left here, just got to zoom in from one of our outposts. That's uh, no anti-aliasing for people that really love to see jagged edges. Uh, the center one is our TSA, which is what you've got in the current release today. And on the right-hand side is TSR without doing upscaling. And this is going to be replacing the TSA solution. And this gives us better quality and more stable image and hopefully much less ghosting. We can use our TSR to do upscaling. Here's the example of how it looks at each resolution. And similar results from AMD's FSR. And some numbers here, which I'm sure you can pour over later. But basically, we can get about two times GPU performance if you're interested in using the upscaling technique. Uh, obviously, if you're CPU limited, you might not get quite them numbers. It depends on your machine. Uh, we also intend to look at frame generation techniques like FSR free and DLSS free. But these are going to come a bit later. We're going to focus on GPU performance. Getting that up first, frame generation isn't really applicable unless you've got a really good performance first. <laughs> some of the quick up and we're still working on that. So there's just some some quick news on their temporal upscaling. We'll see how that goes. It's currently still tentative, but I hear it is. Is it in testing? I don't know. Maybe somebody can confirm. Finally, last little bit that we have right now, and folks, there is going to be some stuff on the um, patch watch for this, which is kind of like how they look at the, the smaller things that are coming into these patches that aren't necessarily on the roadmap tracker. Hello, Mrs. T. Hi. Hi. Um, so there will be other stuff in there. Definitely, a, did somebody say to shoot me? Or are you just getting overexcited? Uh, here, they actually go into a little bit of the talk about economy and how that's changing in 3.23. So there is going to be some economy changes. Not something I was going to go over today, but something to keep in mind. And there will probably be a couple other small things. I'm thinking of some little FPS fixes and stuff that will show up. Not on the release view like this, but will sneak into the patch otherwise. The replication layer update. That's going to take a whole video to explain. Um, 
I can't summarize that in five minutes for you, to be honest. But the replication layer update, if you want to learn more about that, I just put out two different videos about server meshing on the channel. They are the most recent ones, and they'll give you an idea of how it's working into server meshing. Um, it's essentially how we're going to be able to keep all shards and servers in sync um, and keep the game running. Less crashes. Crash recovery is going to be a thing. They've been testing that in Evocati, and it allows for basically a 30k to occur and people to just kind of sit there and wait for it to kick back up, and then they keep playing in that same server or in that same shard, maybe not the same server. So it's important in terms of stability, and it's actually one of the more important parts of 323, but one they haven't been talking about too much. It's tentative. It was planned to be in the game during 3.22. Um, actually, I think 3.21 first, and then 3.22, and now 3.23 and we'll see what happens with it. I'm surprised that we haven't heard more about it since server meshing is going well, but I'm guessing something's going on behind the scenes. Appreciate the server meshing vid you did for smooth brains like me. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it. I hope it was accurate enough to move the needle a little bit on people's understanding about that. But that's about it, guys. That is my full review of, or rather preview of what's coming in 323. Felt Again, like this is probably one of the last times I'll be talking about 323 without playing it as we do see the PTU coming up soon. And yeah, from what I'm seeing, things are looking good. At the beginning of this quarter, we didn't have much footage or understanding of what these would actually include. And now we've seen a lot of them in ISC. We talked about them in Star Citizen Live. We got a better understanding of them and it's looking like a really well balanced patch with a lot of stuff that everybody's going to be able to benefit from but it might not make the game extremely different for you i think the overall experience is going to be a lot better but this is still a patch in a long list of patches that we need to make the game feel like a game um better ai more faction support more rewards that are in game uh, an economy and stability those are all things that don't get fixed with 323 but they do move forward so i'm looking forward to the year ahead what am I looking forward to the most in 323? The map. Absolutely the map. I think they're testing server recovery and production. Prod, prod. You've had a couple crashes and recover over like 90 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Probably hair. Look at you. Yeah, map and UI. But I'm really, really looking forward to being able to share locations soon. Still no word on when this is going out. I'm seeing people saying they're pushing an Evo patch today and might consider it for Wave 1 PTU afterward. We'll see. I hope they wait a little bit because I will be out of town. But um, yeah, I think we could see this in PTU by no later than next week. If if they can get it through PTU in two to three weeks, I'd be impressed. Um, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking late April... Actually, I guess since it says Q2, they did say April at some point, but maybe they'll maybe they'll push it in the first week of May. I don't think it's going to be a problem for Invict this week, though. No expected release date yet. So we'll see what happens. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming in. Oh, this, is your this got raided by Sigelian. Yo, my friend, thank you so much for dropping the folks by. Appreciate you. Y'all got here right as... <laughs> We're actually wrapping up our own stream here. But I love to wrap it up with some good pizza. I know there's pizza in the chat when Segelian's throwing a raid. Thank you for dropping by, everybody. Hope you had a good raid with Seg. And a good day overall in your, your lovely Monday. Can we get a shout out for the man? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I hope you've been having a good Monday. We're here just wrapping up a quick review, preview, again, sorry, of 323 and what's coming in the next patch for Star Citizen. It's looking good. Uh, that was a solid, what, two and a half, three hours worth of, of getting over that stuff. I love it. Thank you for the haircut comments. Appreciate you. It, it feels good. My head, my head can breathe again. It's nice. Banana gamings. That's what I look like. I promise it's not. I, I, I kind of crowd this view. There we go. That's better. Thank you all for coming to this preview. 
I hope you got a lot out of it. We're now going to look for somebody else to raid. I guess we're kind of, we're just kind of piling on the raids. It's a uh, snowball. It's a snow citizen. I'll drop you over with HC Vertigo since we were just on Captain's Table together over on Twitch. A nicely shaped head. So Mrs. Tomato tells me. <laughs> it's time for us to go have some foods, some dinner together, enjoy our time. Uh, we will be back again for the streams probably end of this week, beginning of next week. More info to come out on that, but like I said, we will be out of town a bit for Eid this week. So um, keep an eye out on the Discord for that and for going live messages. And I'll see you all shortly. Have a good one. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>